Best of threes, they've won four. They did lose to Unique, but Blink, having said that at the same time, actually crossed paths with Unique merely three weeks ago and mm. smashed them to zero. So actually, comparison like for like, you would say Blink probably have the upper hand just because of the history of these two teams. But Ecstatic, of course, over at Pinnacle are the favorites to win this contest. Yeah, it should be interesting. And of course, we look head to heads as well. I mean, these two sides, they haven't played each other since September. That was the last time they met. And of course, since then, the head to heads, they've played three times where they've had these cores together. And it's a 2-1 in favor of the likes of Ecstatic. Of course, they were then under the name of Linky Vikings. But it all remains the same. Of course, there's the pinnacle odds in favor of Ecstatic. 1.61 for them. Let's see how this one plays out. Ecstatic starting on that T side of Vertigo Blink on the CT side. Yeah, and jumping straight into it, Rigon wasting absolutely no time whatsoever and going for the aggressive ramp play. Doesn't spot anything immediately, though. One, one flat throw, excuse me, just here to uh, help out, I guess, you know, be the eyes to the lane play, but nothing given away from the ecstatic guys just yet. Yeah, very slow tempo, and I like this as well. Rigon looking for an opportunity, just the pixel to work with, but it's better from the sky. He's managed to sneak his way forward. Oh, and here we go. Glock's rattling on off. It is, in fact, one flat row to find the first. But from Sky Shell Trade, so not all bad here for the Ecstatic boys. The boost unsuccessful. There's now a four-on-four -four scenario. Bird from Sky lining up the util, patiently waiting for his time to strike. Going to drop the molly here to catch off the lane player, isolating these jewels. That's what they're looking to do here, Neo. Can yeah. Sanary find anything more than that? No, USP unsuccessful. Now they can burst out to the site. Yeah, unfortunate for Senery there. Call cool with Bev Sky finding one more, but it's GXX from above. Assassin's Creed like finding himself one. Look at the deny the bomb. He's gonna do exactly that, but the trade comes forward from Mainz. Still keeping the dream alive, but no longer. He doubles down brilliantly to find a third in the round. And ecstatic get off to a flying start on Vertigo. Pistaran collected. First run on the board, and now the economy to follow. Yeah. All the upper hand, of course, for Ecstatic. I guess the, the benefit of keeping this map or that round so close is that, you know, sort of financially isn't exactly out of hot water. You know, mm. you can still find yourself with a decent force buy to try and match up to the power of Ecstatic. But being on that T side, we know how unforgiving it can be. So Blink, yes, they take the early disadvantage. But, you know, the last outing, as you touched on, we actually, you know, we saw a Vertigo pick go in the way of Blink 16-6. So what does that say? You know, that speaks volumes about the history of these guys. Last time it was Vertigo Inferno overpass. Of course, slight change in the middle part to the late part of the veto. It is Inferno our decider rather than that blink pick. They traded maps the last time as well. These guys were at it. So let's see if something peculiar can happen again. For the meantime, though, it's round two. It's bog standard. One flat throw. Little bit of damage taken, but it's Max to find the opener. Yeah, that's the main one. Opening kill, man advance is collected. The question is, what can they do with it? And doubling down looks to be the option. Rigo swinging forward and he'll fall. Brilliant stuff to find the opening too. And I think, you know, with these pistols, you couldn't really expect too much of them. The priority really is just trying to make things a little bit expensive. But even that's a tall order. And so far, I think so good. I say this though, 5 7 at range. Not going to connect. Bird from Sky just about recuperates. Mac 10 rattles through the leaf scenery. And GXX 2 versus 5, which is more or less done and dusted, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if these deagles can find anything on the exit, it would be quite nice to, to see that happen, of course. But for now, you know, just shots rattling on off. Nothing more than it. They are merely taking their time. You can hear the spam blink, not really willing to go for it. And the positioning gives everything away, right? You move away. You save the deagles. You save the half armor. You save everything that you can into this next round, Neo, just so you have another shot at doing a bit more damage to try and close that gap financially between yourselves and Ecstatic and Jex. Precisely. Looking, uh, looking, looking at least for an exit, but not exactly running forward, you know, all guns blazing, just trying to keep the armor. That's the most important factor. Yeah, it's quite calm and collected from Ecstatic so far, isn't it? But I'm liking what I'm seeing from them. They're not really overextending. There's no overzealous peaks. It's just very, very slow, methodical Counter-Strike, and it's working in their favor. And the question is now, you know, if Ecstatic keep up this current air of confidence about them, I'm going to be quite enjoying what we see going forward, especially when we move on towards Ancient, which they themselves are actually happy to move on to. So, move forward with, you know, little to no change to where we picked off from the bomb plant in the previous round. Round three, it is an eco for Blink, and it's ecstatic. I mean, just chilling with those SMGs, they understand it's a money maker, especially because that force fight unsuccessful for the Blink side. And you can see Bird from Sky wasting no time whatsoever, getting aggressive. The nade, big damage, and the Mac 10 to find the opener. Any more frags, it would be nice to the back pockets. 
Nice swing, one flat throw in for the trade. The Deagle doing some serious work as it finds a second frag. Not all terrible here, but from Sky has to stay passive. He's going to find the advantage once more. But that is an AK and a Mac 10 drops on ramp. Already not too bad. Three versus two as well. And I think you need to be extremely careful. These pistols are making things expensive and making this a little bit worrying to the least. But the question is now that Blink very much have to be aware and ever so cautious the flank coming through. Bomb to be planted over towards this B side. And the question is, what do they want to do with it? Bird from Sky looking to cut off rotations. And the main thing probably denying those weapons being collected. There you go. Farming another kill with the SMG. One flat throw against the lot. Three players to find. Don't really fancy his chances here. As you can hear the noise. He's using the audio cue at least to some advantage to get the swing. But Dafu's Mac 10. Way too pacey. Way too quick for the Deagle. And it's ecstatic to a third. Decent start here for the Danes. But of course, Blink now. This is their chance to respond. The full buy into this round. Tons of utility. Now is their chance to sort of flip things over. And uh, I guess turn a new page. Try and start something new. Get their momentum going. Yeah, exactly. Very much so. A good start. 3-0. The full buy is the big test. The Pinnacle had sort of predicted that we'd see Ecstatic coming out on top. And so far, they're spot on. But of course, you can head over to Pinnacle. Tap GG. For us, welcome. Use the code 421 up on sign up. And you can uh, get up to 100% on your deposit. Up to 100 euros. So far, aggressive utility over towards Ramp. And Ramp controls are a crucial part of Vertigo, right? You have to explain a lot of utilities to give yourself an opportunity. But speaking about opportunities, Manx or 4? Yeah, Regan, really nice opener. Intuitiveness to go aggressive, but not overzealous. And, of course, Blink, having granted themselves with that early advantage, need Ooh. to be careful. Regan trying to line up the smoke. Unfortunately for him, though, his head will get taken off as he let goes of that mouse one. Fasher going aggressive, caught by the AWP of GXX. And now a four on three. Ecstatic, got to fight within numbers. Got to fight against the grain of Synopsy with one more. Shutting things down. One flat throw in for the flank. Dafu does read into it, but it just isn't enough. GXX will pick up a second with the AWP, and it will silence Ecstatic's dreams of a 16-0. That's what they needed, right? 3-1. They get a round of the board and give themselves an opportunity going forward. And it was desperately needed. On their first full buy, they needed to find somewhat of a comfortability. Of course, the, uh, I guess, silver lining, you could say, for Ecstatic, is, of course, they got a Connie to work with. Bank allows them a buy into this. And a big sort of, now, not question mark, but a big shining light as Wolfie picking up that AWP to try and battle out of GXX. And this is the battle we've been sort of looking forward to. GXX at times can be an unstoppable orper, but we know Wolfie can do exactly the same. It really is the battle of the snipers. One flat throw, though, playing the battle of the aggression. Now maybe, you know, getting a bit too cheeky. Way too aggressive uh, from Sky Reads into that play and able to take him down. So a quick five on four. Ecstatic now, you know, you can see they slam the brakes. They use the control to their advantage. You touched on how important this ramp presence mm. is. And they are trying to do exactly that. Taking their time here. Nades over. Just preserving their control. The hold and wait. It's coming in. We're trying to give ourselves an opportunity. Still, the man advantage is collected, but it's not too much control is the worrisome side. Start that util just burning through. Spam coming in. Or oh, GXX, of course, finds the first. Looking for a second. Nice, slick trade from Fasher. He's going to continue to go aggressive, though. Scenario. Trying to ask for assistance through flashbang. Styles turn back to find one. Looking for more though. Back and forth between the Ooh. angles. The scenario with a second. And that second might be enough as Synopsy now goes on the front push. And the frontal force good enough. Wolfie with it all to do with the AWP. Peeking in. Fires off the shot. Cannot spot a thing through that smoke. And well now. 30 seconds to go. Many different options. But the bomb is a priority. One versus two, 49 points of HP to work with. We've seen one versus twos work in their favor. OC yesterday was a real highlight to add to the memories, but can Wolfie replicate? And of course, if they want to take a grand final against Extra Salt, they're going to need to see exactly that. But he's going to be spotted out. Synopsy will finish him off. Just peeks in from heaven. Comfortable stuff. And that's 3 2 in the scoreline. Blink, make this a one round affair. Ecstatic. What was a strong start at the back of the pistol is now not looking too fruitful. Those bit of gods, though, still favouring Ecstatic, but they're getting close. Yeah, definitely evening up a little bit here. You can see, right, heading into round six, that the buy for Blink, good. But the one for Ecstatic, yeah, definitely a bit lacklustre. You touched on losing that buy and losing the second one. The one just gone, of course, is just a real kick in the teeth financially for the T side. Now they are set back to more or less square one. Nice util, stuck one flat throw. 
will take about half health. Nothing more than it, though. It's ecstatic. You know, these early advantages need to be found because the gun department is lackluster. So, minute and 30 to go. Choices are basically this B-site with no ramp control. And already it's an obviously fantastic start. He says he's coming through, but it seems too little too late, especially with them posted up. Subs, he's going to give it another chance. He's going to find it. Manx will fall, and one by one, they're just being picked apart here. It's easy pickings, in fact, as Synopsy finds a quad to his name. One remaining alive in that of Dafu, and I think his number is up, really. Here with a max 10, and against all five, your limits are set. And, well, a first kill, sort of pushing the limit, but he won't extend it any further than that scenario to pick up the last. And with four survivors and four kills in the round to Synopsy's name, Blink secure the level game. It's three apart here out on Vertigo, of course. The initial outing is Ecstatic's bat pick. We head to Ancient afterwards, which is Blink's choice. And all the more rounds you can pick up here, all the more momentum you can gain into map one, that's where things get interesting. Of course, those at home maybe that are very, very interested in the Blink boys. They're chilling. Jersey's on. I must admit, Neo, big fan of the design. I'm with you. I think they're really, really comfortable, right? They look nice. And it's uh, that's kind of sleek, minimalistic design, which is uh, I'm so, so clean, right? You can't complain at all. And so far, Blink can't complain about how they've turned things around. Since they picked up a full buy, they're looking a lot better. And GXX want to start. One to his name, make that two. When Flatro comes in for support, and one by one, they just get decimated. Blink take a leave for the first time in not only this map, but this series. And just like that, things are starting to look up for the Albanian side. Oh, man. Absolutely. Really nice stuff to see. Kicking things off with a bang here, Neo. You know, losing the pistol, losing that third round, sort of the, the second round eco, the third, or rather the second round force, the third round eco, really turning things around on that buy has now allowed them get back on the board, pick your options well, and now start picking that momentum back up for yourselves and heading into round eight. It is the full AK investment, one off on Wolfie. How quick will the response be for Ecstatic if it will be one? As you can see, containing their beast out on ramp one. Flat throw, just looking over the top of the smoke as he lines up to quick, agile, and well devastating to the ecstatic side. No trade in a five on three. Yeah, we'll be waiting for an opportunity now, and I don't think he's going to be given it as well. When Flat throw just. Triggering the angle, miss shot as well, gives away the ruse where he's posted off, swinging back in, that's so aggressive, and one flatter is lucky to stay alive. Oh wow, really is playing with death himself. Man, Molly's being dipped in, five on three scenario, blink, just looking I guess to, to get an edge in. Away in, on Flatro is given exactly that. Now Ecstatic need to put on a show, a performance to remember. In this 5 on 3 with 40 seconds to go, they've got minimal choices to make. Swing in, Juan Flatro, dink. It's this uh, M4 of Scenario, excuse me, to pick up one. Dafu will trade, but a 4 on 2. The consistency continues with Blink's success here as well. Manx, he's able to show some resistance. Any more than it, it could get a bit dicey. I remember that wall bang as well. It's getting ever close. Oh, Dafu's oh. going to fall. Naystack comes through with a post plant at least somewhat set up. One. I'm looking for two, but not going to be able to connect. With two remaining alive, it's Blink you find five. A nice retake from them. Comfortably done. Utility perfectly executed. And just like that, Blink go two ahead of the T side on their opponent's map pick. Things are looking really up for the side. And this is problematic now for Ecstatic because it's showing that they're very momentum heavy. They got off to a fantastic start off the back of a pistol round and have now just started to really peter out. Yeah, I think something to note as well though, the, the blink economy isn't great. In that round just gone, we were in a five on two at one point and, yeah. you know, Ecstatic were able to take down... Mm -hmm. When I, when I look into this round, I mean, absolutely nice to see that Blink are picking up rounds of momentum. A really nice 2k to kick things off from Juan Flatro. But actually, you know, you only ended this round with two survivors. Ecstatic are in more than a good position to reinvest, to try and whistle away at that economy once more. Synopsy, there you go. Caught aggressing, but GXX available for a trade as Juan Flatro aggressive once more. A 4 on 3 quickly delves into something more than just successful, Blink now holding on to a big HP lead. And of course, already the biggest thing of that man advantage for me is consistent that Blink have found it. And GXX, a lovely reactionary shot there. Perfect Sky Falls, caught in the open, caught in transition. 
And this ecstatic side have been absolutely picked apart. It seems like boys versus men out there. Since that full blade came through, Blink have been untouchable. This is five rounds in a row. Most likely looking like it's going to be six. As ecstatic are struggling to get off the mark. The second the Empire when Essence have come through, they've been untouchable. Now Senori spotting one more. The Molotov will force him away. But all he has to do is hold and wait. And obviously in for support. One more to his tally as Max Manx will fall. And it's fashion you know, a one versus four. And, you know, Retro, we said he's a good player. But I think this is a little bit too much. Or is it? One kill, Fash up. At least trying to will down the old smoke court out. And GXX going aggressive, understandably so. Trying to isolate the fight. And that he has Blink up to six. And as you can see, the money again starting to fade away for that yeah. T side. The outburst of the lost bonus did develop a buy in the previous. But I think this one here, you have to take a half buy. You have to rethink things. And if I'm honest with you, mate, I think we've got to see attack timeout soon. Ecstatic. They're, they're way too ahead of themselves. I think you've got to slow down the pace, call a yeah. pause, talk things through, what's going on. Absolutely spot on. I think the, the perfect answer to it would be after this sort of low buy coming through. Big nade coming in as well. So obviously should be able to pick up a couple here. But actually just going to fall away. Smart stuff. Doesn't want to give up the souls. And there you go, GXX with the opener. M4 good for two. And Synopsy, he's done more than just the work. He's done everything he Ooh. needs to do. Dafu though with a tech nine. Catching Rigon off in transition. That Tech-9 delivering at least the one. He's peeking in, trying to find the advantages from behind. The backstab from Juan Flatro is enough. The spray down to give Blink their seventh now. Developments need to be shown heading into this round here, Neo. We've yep. got to see improvement very, very quickly because, of course, that's where things can really start slipping for Blink. They cannot afford to let themselves get too no. ahead of themselves mentally. And, of course, as well, you know, Level it with aggression, but also play the passive game. We haven't seen much passiveness from them. Juan Flatro loving that ramp aggression. I'm wondering when we see the ecstatic guys capitalize. Yeah, the biggest thing as well is that we really haven't seen Rig on pop off, but it's not in fact that he's playing bad. He's just, of course, playing over towards a pretty isolated position. He's playing that rotate area. Because of that, he's not been giving too much opportunity to look this one. Flatro finding a brilliant opener. That stunning aggression has worked brilliantly in his favor. Opening kill goes their way, and this full by already being heated out. We said ecstatic, they should have called for attack. Yeah, maybe a little later in the half it'll come. But I just worry it will be too little, too late for the first half at least. It's a 5-on-4 yeah, on. situation once more. Blink, as you can see. Juan Flatro, aggressive on the T side, aggressive on the CT side. Just matching the pace and the power of Ecstatic. And it's granted them another 5-on-4. It's granted them that early advantage. You know, manipulating the play quite well here. You can see Blink playing passive waiting for the next opportunity to pounce and it will have to be on this a-hold yeah exactly that well we'll see how things play out i mean it's been it's been a tough time especially you know individual as well wolfie's really not popped off he was 007 at one point so says everything right and of course he's looking to try and find something off the mark fashion one to his neighbors when flat show him for the trade we speak about trades that becomes on the top before wolfie falls Info scopes the wild ones from GXX trying to find something. M4 spam up close. They won't find a thing, but still, Neo, numbers game here on the retake. Bomb ticking away. Ecstatic. They've got to get a move on in, you know, assuming the post plant positions. They've got to find themselves no a bit of a lead. And Synopsy, he's sticking it. No one's no speaking. Way. No one's speaking <laughs> from Ecstatic. And they're just going to stick the bomb defuse. Max will find Rig on after it's gone. But it does no. not matter. The Kings hold on. And even in a retake, they slip one right from underneath. Blink <laughs> eight, Ecstatic three. That is brilliant. I mean, it's one of those things they use the chaos of a round in their favor for the easiest defuse ever. All they have to do is stick because no one expects them to stick in that sort of situation. That's brilliantly done. And well, uh, again, goes back to what we're saying about Ecstatic, where you know, I think for us, we always sort of discussed of them as a very team oriented side, right? You know, they're very good in terms of uh, how they play, in terms of you know, team synergy up there with some of the best, right? And this is what we're not seeing. And it's starting to show as well, maybe highlight to a degree, that they actually do rely on the individuals. Wolfie's 0-10, and, and he's not popping off. And simultaneously, with Wolfie not popping off, that's very ecstatic. Mm, seems a bit lacklustre, doesn't it? You know, Wolfie's yeah. securing a 0.7 KPR over the past three months. And in this game, it's just, as you said, fallen flat. It seems a bit dismal. Juan Flatro, the opener once more, will finally get traded. We see the 5-on-5 five five traded to a 4-on-4. Four four. Synopsy going aggressive towards the middle. Now maybe Neo, we're starting to see overzealousness a bit too much from Blink. They're in 3-on-4. Yes. Got to claw back the numbers. They are way too confident now. And this is the thing that we see teams really fall flat on. When they get 
too overconfident, and because of that, they get too comfortable. Is what we're seeing. Bling, they're just going for aimless peaks, no ability to trade, no crossfire set up, and immediately we've seen two being picked off, which is left ecstatic with a man advantage. They've been given a free man advantage as well. So whether they can work with it or not, Hineo, is the big question mark highlighting round 12 ecstatic playing things very late in the round i'm not a big fan of this i think you've really got to start Risky. picking up this execute as you said right the risk gets more and more the reward obviously stays the same you've just got to find that bomb plant and for now with 20 seconds to go you've really got to start seeing a shift here a big big movement smoke towards the sites the cross smoke set up and i guess they have been gifted an opportunity to set this bomb down or have they rig on one no. rig on two and oh my good gone it might just be enough as dafu will find the trade bomb still set down molly dropped in gxx not going to find anything with it and so now the nerves settle for that ecstatic side now they've got to find themselves back on the board and in a two on two retake who would have thought it's down to this missed shots from dafu but the orb compromised wolfie will find his first of the game and of course the second to follow up we needed him to step up we needed to see him hit the kill feed and he does so in a monstrous way finally he starts firing all cylinders and so do ecstatic for the first time in eight rounds we've seen ecstatic pick up one i mean still of course the ct side of one at the half but if ecstatic can easily find you know six or seven it's not the end of the world. There's still room to work with. But it goes back to what we were saying about them being very momentum heavy. And I think this is a maybe an ever so slight kind of hindrance in their play style. Uh, the way in which they go about each game, each map, each series. 8-4 to four, though, and a 4 by both ways. Nades are in. And of course, one flat throw, the signature ramp peak. And the so man good. just does it again with ease. So much ease. And there's no trade from Ecstatic. We're, we're right back to exactly. sort of three, four rounds ago. And here you could see a first kill into a round seven of nine times. And of course, one of the times that they didn't do it was in the round just gone. So, you know, these guys, ridiculous at finding the advantages. And capitalizing upon it seems to be another trick of the trade. Wolfie at least going to catch off the aggression master himself. One flat throw finally out of this round. But it is still a four on three. It is still the numbers game in favor of Blink. And for the Albanians, I don't think there's going to be much shifting from this as Wolfie reanimates himself with the AWP. He's found himself two. Same way he did in that previous round. Mang spots out. Bomb four. So does Wolfie. Senator, he's doubled down. At least all down. Two one man. Fascia got it all to do and so little to work with. And from behind, GXX cleans up. Nine to four. Blink come back alive when they were needed most. And it's what you said, Retro. When it comes down to it, one Flatro finding that opening kill consistently isn't doing enough, right? He creates so much space individually that it gives all the room for Blink to work with. And ecstatic, they can't keep giving away a free kill at the start of every round within the first 10 seconds. That cannot keep happening. No. And, and once again, ecstatic uh, losing maybe a little bit of thought process just to the fact that the aggression, they don't know where it's coming from. In that situation, yeah. no user was dedicated for the sandbags clear. Once again, well, it's not one flat throw, it's an airy this time to go for the aggression, but one flat throw still available for a trade. Fasher, he'll respond with one of his own though, so not a terrible four on three for Ecstatic. We're starting to see them come alive once more, but of course, it is nine for the scoreline. It is guaranteed to be a CT win at the halftime whistle. It's just a matter of how big. How big? That's the real question. Four versus three in favor of the side. Miss shot by GXX gets punished. And I think the start of the Peter out now. We spoke about this being a part and parcel of Ecstatic, but they're being just destroyed and leaves Rig on. The star player, but with a lot to do and not a lot to work with. Can he get it done? Fast shot. First in his crosshair. He will pick him up. A one on three now here. For the star man for Blink. This would be a big, big step up for him. Not only just for him, but for the team as well. Winning this one on four would absolutely shatter the thoughts and the hopes of Ecstatic. Swinging in. Had the right idea. Fires a bullet. Does connect to Wolfie, but only a body shot means that there is no frag. And three survived here for Ecstatic. They find themselves a fifth. Pinnacle, though. Yeah, I mean, as to be expected, fairly yeah. one-sided in favor of the Blink boys. They are 9-5 up, last of the half, got enough money to invest here, Neo. Can yeah. they find double digits? That's the question we're asking ourselves heading into round 15. It's understandable why the, those pinnacle odds are uh, so one-sided, because this game has been so far so one-sided. 9-5 to five on the scoreline. Question is heading to the final round. Can Ecstatic make it a six? They make it doable, right? Three rounds is not the end of the world. But it's a full buy once again, both ways. AWP for Wolfie. Can he use it? It's been a hit and miss at times, it's safe to say. 
And if he can step up here, it would mean everything to the ecstatic guys. Sinari finds the first one. Black Crow, look at his position. Ooh. He's ready for the aggression, but Wolfie just as quick to the trigger and beats him out in the aim jewel. Now down, of course, to that 4-on-4. Four four. A very valiant attempt at earning the advantage, but quickly thrown away here. The over-aggression may be a bit punishing into this round, Neo. We'll just have to wait and see. A minute and 13 seconds. So much time burnt out. Ecstatic still not moved off of the bottom ramp position. Well, they expect an obsidian close, waiting for an opportunity. He may have just been spotted, I think. He has been. Double swing coming through. Dafu on clean up duty, but Fasher and Dafu take a lot of damage and join the likes of Wolfie with just a shred of health left in this. So it still could go either way. Oh, absolutely. And these M4s, right? That's one bullet to, to two players yep. and two bullets to another. You know, five bullets is the difference in this round, is the easiest way of summarizing. Precisely. And we'll just have to see if that five bullets can be brought forward. If it can find the mark, the B site in compromise. GXX, he's got the AWP. And he's got a lot on his plate. Good for the first. No. Denied of it. Missed shot. Has to drop the smoke up close and personal. Does correct himself for the second, though. Looking for more. No scope misses. Ducks into the smoke. The M4 can't quite pepper him down. Rig on there to assist. And all of a sudden, it comes crash and burn in here for Ecstatic. Down to two. The lowest HP of the lot. GXX moving around, but it's Rig and Stubble to close the half. It's 10-5 in favor of Blink. And Ecstatic's map pick disintegrating in front of their very own eyes. That is stunning, stunning stuff. What a half from Blink. They came out firing on all cylinders. Of course, the Pistoran didn't go their way. The Force Spies don't follow. Understandable. But it's the rest of the half where it matters most. And it was that eight rounds in a row which really made the difference. I mean, that is just brilliant. That one period of grace that we saw from Blink, one and a half, right? It didn't matter what else came around it. Blink finished it with 10. And Ecstatic, it was just not good enough at all. The only consecutive rounds they found were off the back of a pistol. And, of course, the full buy. The, or the force buy, I guess you could call it, which, uh, which is netted alongside it. But for me, that's not good enough. And we are going to see a blink timeout call. Just attack timeout here. It's going to understand. I'm going to try to understand what's doing their pistol round. Ecstatic are very good on pistols. It's well known in the area, especially well known in tier two. So they want to be able to try and, well, I guess, cause a bit of an upset here. And I, it begs the question, right? If blink find this pistol round, I think this mountain number one's done. Wow. Don't quite believe my eyes. Oh, fighting words. Look at the look at the emphasis there. Very, yeah. very Let's emphatic go. stuff. Yeah, I'm loving it. Let's see how they can pull it out when it matters at most, because we know what ecstatic are like on their pistol rounds. Very, very clean. Yeah. And and that's enough to close the gap. Being on the CT side, it's hard, but if you can get off your feet early doors, that's what matters most. Manx jiggling in, and here's the hellfire below him. The Glocks spamming away. Synopsy actually taking ground. As I do believe it was Wolfie to back away. Synopsy thinking about the angles back and forth between them. Clearing out the headshot positions. Doesn't spot anything in middle. Patiently waiting for his chance to strike. But for the rest of Blink. Oh, it's the double boost up. They've got two players stacked on the wooden peak. Manx. He's got to be careful. This position could cost him everything. Bird from Sky will only throw the flashbang on Q. And it is now. Great flash, but it blinds his teammate. They're trying to make the way forward. Manx holding down the force. Wolfie we'll dying the first. Manx finding one alongside it. Make that two and three. Stunning stuff. And we said their pistols are brilliant. And just like that, it's a flawless one to add to their tally. Is it going to be enough for them to catch up? Well, that's the perfect start to start themselves a bit of a resurgence. Full bites follow suit. And uh, Blink, they may have taken the time out, but it came to absolutely no avail. Wow. Really impressive stuff to see. And Manx's triple. You know, the definition of what was the requirement in that yeah. round. You know, to win the pistol, someone had to step up. We knew individually these guys were getting absolutely paced by Blink. So round 16 had to be a victory in their name, and that it was. And into 17, and the MP9 looking to make fat stats of cash. It's Dafu, though. M4A1S wielding a double, looking for a triple as the USP pulled out. Wolfie will slip the last in the feed. So I guess, you know, $1,200 for the SMG, not terrible at all. But we move into round 18, and Blink, of course, taking the eco in the previous. They're going to get a full bite, a chance to respond here. Yeah, full eco, of course, gives them the opportunity. There's been a god still very much in favour of uh, Blink, and understandably so, but uh, we'll see how things well, are fair for Ecstatic. Now they're on the arguably more favourable side of the CT. Full by both ways, this is the real test for Ecstatic. They failed last time out. This time, can it work in their favour? 
That is the real question. Well, there you have it. Already the opener being found by Manx. MP9 aggressive. MP9 delivers. Blink. You know, maybe not expecting what was done to them right back in their face. Yeah. As, uh, well, you know, conceding this early man, rethink the strategy a bit. Do you want to group up your forces, go together? Or do you want to send someone in and try and do everything in the world to stop them? They've got the difference ever so slightly when it comes to firepower, just because of that MP9. But it's that MP9 who gets off to a fantastic start. The aggression was, to be honest, Blink's best friend in that first half. And they're looking very, very slow here. And, of course, you could argue methodical, but... I think for them, they're really kind of aggressive and lack of respect was their biggest selling point. And Mainz are going to double down. Brilliant. I think this round might already be done. And Blink may even opt to try and just keep hold of what they've got. So, five on three. Should be an easy closeout. Synopsy spotting out the man on headshot. Bird from Sky looking to tuck in. Wolfie on the double pillar. Patiently waiting for his chance to strike. A flashbang, good. Synopsy, big damage, and he will find one. Wolfie's trade, more than enough to keep them alive, though. Molly's and Nades dropped in from the CT side. And here you go, 30 seconds to go, and they absolutely bomb out of B. There's no point going there. Whether they want to try and get the bomb plant near, I don't quite know. Yeah. But I think, yeah, this is the smart decision, right? Move away, save the rifles. The lost bonus starting to build up. My only problem here, Neo, is that... You know, heading into the next round, the loss bonus isn't at four. So you're not cashing in, you know, yeah, nigh on exactly. $4,000. You're, you're less than that. And with the balances currently sitting in for the blink side, you are going to be in a bit of trouble, Water. Yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, arguably, I think they probably should have just opted for the save when it was Synopsy was still alive. You know, all yeah, th yeah, those three. Yeah. Because they, they're never going to find anything. With the utility, Ecstatic had waiting. That's that one thing that Ecstatic are very, very good at. They're very good at on their CT side holding utility to the late game. Because they understand exactly how teams like to play against them quite slow. Well, like what we're seeing from Blink. And they're very good at countering it. And it goes back to what I was saying in that round. That Blink's best friend in the first half was their aggression. Very, very high in you know, it's an insane tempo, really. They were consistently getting that ramp control off the back of aggressive peaks that were working in their favor. And that's the sort of methodical kind of prowess to bring in towards their T side. Aggression. Get in the face of the CT side. Don't give them any comfortability. And there we oh go. Oh, my God. There you go, Neo. That's what I'm talking about. That's Blink's best friend. Oh, they need to consistently keep God. doing it. GXX, a second to his name. Perfect Sky at four. And this is what they need to consistently keep doing with Daffy finds the trade before he himself falls. One flat throw, rig on, and synopsy all flood the feed and blink just like that. Execute a pixel perfect round, blink up to 11, and that response was in dire need to happen. And ecstatic now, you know, the, the hopes and dreams of pulling numbers back, getting this CT side off to a brilliant start. Maybe hindered with round 19, but we move to round 20 and a chance may be for the boys in blue to respond and for them to get back on that board to close the gap merely down to two. But Blink looking to open it right back up. Oh, Blink have seen what can work. I mentioned that their aggression was their best friend and they make it work. But this time again, they go back to the same thing of slowing it down. And the question for me is that it gives Ecstatic a lot of room to work with. They've essentially given up complete ram control over towards the CT side, which, lucky for them, Ecstatic haven't taken control of yet. So, job spotting around, looking for the info plays. Nades dropped in. They won't find much from it, though. For now, it is silence. It is desolation across the board. Blink just taking their time. Holding on to a fair chunk of U2 here, Neo. I think they're just going to try and line up and execute later in the round. Just take the control. Yeah. Try and work the pick. If not, play the numbers game. Numbers game, exactly that. The trades are working in their favour. Trades do benefit the T-side. Let's see how they want to make this one work. It comes the utility as well over towards... Side coming through. Back pillar needs to be cleared. Now Molotov will do exactly that. In fact, Mount is forced so far forward. Well, there you go. One flat throw with the opener. Manx to trade at least a four on four. Rigon. He'll find one. Nicely done. Fasher to trade a three on three. Blink. Keeping things competitive. But ecstatic hot on their heels. Sineri out towards the A site. Looking for the bomb plant. Wolfie. I don't think he heard it. Or if he did, he's, he's not paying attention to it whatsoever. He's looking for the flank here on ramp. Do they expect the peak? No, they don't. Sineri does fire off a shot. But not before Wolfie finds the two on three. The flank from Rigon, though, means everything. Oh, it doesn't work out. Fascia spots him out. 
reactionary, but GXX speaking about that, you'll find one before the Molotov will be do enough to force him out into the open, and Ecstatic made the retake work, it was all down to that flank, wasn't it, and Rigon, the failure to convert it left them isolated, and well, Ecstatic taking the round, 9-11, to 11. they make this a two-round affair, which is more than easily can be brought level, and I think again, it goes back to what I'm saying, Retro, you know, for Blink, their best friend has been their aggression, and the fact that they're trying to play slow here is not working in their favour. Well, Blink taking a timeout, nothing more than it. You know, the gap is now down to two. The CT side is, is getting there. Ecstatic, you know, losing out big time. Double digits at the half, bear that in mind. And now they're merely two rounds away from catching up to Blink. We've got to give the props, of course, to the Danes. They are making moves back into this one. Round 21, a big, big turning point. Blink know they're at the lower hand. They know Ecstatic have every advantage here. Just about, I guess... Playing the seconds, play the rounds. This is the most important one of the game. Can you make it work? Yeah, this attack needs to be utilized. I think things are looking very dire for Blink. And it goes to the point as well, you know, a full buy to come through. Fantastic stuff. Long term economy, though, is pretty poor, apart from the likes of one flat show. And the failure to convert this leaves Blink with a broken economy. If they don't get a bomb down, they will have no buy coming into the next, which gives me exactly more than enough room to work with. Flash coming through, and it's Manx again. Aggression coming through off the back of that flashbang gives him an opening kill. He did it once before and they don't learn their lesson. A grand advantage picked up with four on four scenario. Still kept competitive. Molly dropped in. Juan Flatro on the aggression though. And Juan Flatro doesn't stop as he continues to tear heads down. Manx available for a trade, but GXX is all able to silence and able to destroy. Ecstatic lose out on a 12th. And the moment that mattered most, the hype moment for Blink to turn things all around, and it goes in their name. Round 21 success, and in turn, Blink 4 from victory. They're getting closer. It's much, much better, but it goes back to uh, what we were saying was that the sort of real falter, I guess you could call it, of uh, that exact side was... At times, it seemed like they relied on individuals, right? In that first, especially in that first half, when Wolfie wasn't popping off, they did start to fall apart, right? And Blink, that time, it requires a brilliant individual effort for them to even find a shred of hope in that round. But Sopsy, early utility coming through, not going to cause too much problems over towards the CT side, as they're essentially just gamble stacking over towards A. Molly dropped in. A second one as well. Execute on forward. Ecstatic. Gambling the wrong site. And I think that just about summarizes this one in general. All five players nowhere to be seen out towards the B site, which does lead to a pretty spicy uh, retake, I guess. Yeah. But ecstatic. Do they even go for it? Doesn't look to be. I think they're going to forfeit a thirteenth, and they're going to play for the for the game, the longevity. Pretty interesting stuff to see. Already a lot better. I'm liking this. Blink. Thirteen from the board. Post is comfortable. Eight now. The main kind of priority is trying to keep as many weapons. Out of the hands of Ecstatic. We know their economy is in a dire straight. And they're playing for the uh, the exit frags. And as long as they're not given anything. You know, maybe a trade comes with us, fine. You know, lose a couple of lives. Not the end of the world. A 13th collected. Three rounds away from the all elusive 16 needed. For map number one. And, it, you know, when we mentioned it coming into this. Map number one. This is Ecstatic's pick. Their best map, statistically speaking, in the last three months. One in which they've looked unstoppable on. And Blink, who come into this one with a 56% win rate arguably looking like the significantly better side. Well, three rounds from it here, Neo. You're counting down the numbers if you're a Blink fan. For Ecstatic, you are clinging on for dear hope that yeah. maybe, just maybe, this force weird sort of half by situation works out in their name. Taking their time, though. Round 23. Synopsy, of course. Why not? Aggression towards ramp. Playing around the smokes. Playing for the one ways. Just trying to get this control. Ecstatic. Quad stacking A once more. In fact, all five players stacking the A site. My apologies. So, actually, when Blink go for this B execute, I mean, it's perfect. There's no one here. No one's here to show resistance. And it will be yet another bomb plant and a 5 on 5 retake here for the CC side. Brilliant stuff. They already get the control. Nice. And it goes back to another thing of them having a really good read of how Ecstatic like to gamble stack. Brilliant done. Of course, there'll be a bomb plant. The post one set up. And it goes back to this 5 on 5. GXX got a pick. So to work with, which he delivers brilliantly on. And they're jumping through from Connector. It's a complete 
Massive from Wolves, the site, but it's down to one. Wolfie finds himself oh. one, but the no scope delivers twice round. GXX doesn't need that scope on the top, just use the iron sights. That's 14 collected, two water away. And look at those pinnacle odds as well 1.35 compared to 3.11. But of course, you can have to do tev.gg. For just welcome to find out all the information. So I'm using the code 421, 100% deposit bonus up to 100 euros over our pinnacle. I know, man. This one's getting pretty intense, eh? GXX, no scope master. His 26th kill of the game. Brilliant. As he blasts down wall feet. And maybe that firepower we were talking about required for ecstatic showing up for the all part here on Blink. And the point of no return now for that CT side. Great damage done. Manx eliminated, but Fash has found Synopsy. A four on four. Dafu missed spray. Now things get a bit intense. A bit heated out towards B. A scenario will take his head off. Rigon's AK to find Wolfie. And it is two against them all. Bird from Sky. Stands strong on the B site, though, with a double of his own. One flat throw for the flank. And one flat throw taken down. It's the orb jaw, but it does not work out. Ecstatic up to double digits. And my word, a hectic round. But it does go in the way of the Danes. It does go in the way of ecstatic and they stay alive for just a little bit more but from sky 118 perfectly there finding himself an opening too and of course that trade coming through but it goes back to the multi frag and talents as fashion the rifling expert comes out supreme a timeout to be called now and well slightly understandably so 14 10 it's ever close going down to the wire in the, the series we covered yesterday it was a bit similar right map number one was very very close when that was actually sold coming out on top. And the question is, how will this one fare? 14, two rounds away. Blink's still definitely in the driver's seat, but it's not the most comfortable position to be in. They've got economy to work with, a full buy to follow suit as well, which you look over towards the CT side, and it's going to be a slightly mixed buy, especially for the likes of Dafu and Manx. However, normally I'd say that, you know, that's just problematic. But it seems like Manx and an MP9 is more than happy. No, absolutely. It really does seem it, eh? He converts. He does it. I mean, he does. He does. It's the whole W, right? Yep. We, yeah. We've got that kind of fire fire rate of, of a gun. Whole W. It reigns supreme. Yeah. No, exactly that, man. It's like his W key stuck, and he's like, okay, I'm just going to run with it. Like, that's how he plays. It's just. It's brilliant. Fair play. Yeah. Yeah. And there we go. He's going to pick it up. And th this now goes back to what we were saying earlier. Have Blink learned their lesson? Because you know for a fact he's going to push mid, right? He's done it every single time so far. And it's worked every single time. So, you know, the age-old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, surely when do Blink learn? Yeah. That's the question. Round 25. Biggest one of the game. If Ecstatic can pick this one up, all is saved. And the recovery can be on. AWP, GXX, just going for a little bit of a spam here, Neo. Nothing more than it, you know. Getting yeah. a bit interested to see if he can find the early advantages, get the early leeway, do whatever he can to shake up the numbers. That's what he's looking to do. For now, nothing more than merely the spam, the play. Just doing whatever they can to hold on to the numbers. Yeah, much, much slower tempo. I do actually like this from... Uh... Like to blame because they've seen the gamble stacks already t the last two rounds, and so now they're ever so slightly aware that there could be similar thing on a slightly better buy round. So they're just waiting for an opportunity. Utility in towards mid, but it's Manx will be tested here. The real test coming through, and he's immediately disposed. Rig on his topsy one apiece, and just like that, two man advantage. It is going to be enough retro. Oh, that's the question. Bomb sets down. The saving. And the retake needs to be pieced up, but as you said, are they playing the longevity? They're going for OT. Yes, indeed, they are. That is absurd to me, Neo. That is crazy to me. You know, I guess if it is your map pick, you believe that you can win five in a row. And definitely is doable. You know, some of these rounds, like, even that they haven't picked up, have been close. But, man, I think you're cutting it fine. You are cutting it yeah. real, real fine. And with the bomb ticking away, it means only one thing. Blink up to 15. Ecstatic halt at 10. Well, the only option, of course, for Ecstatic to see themselves to a victory is to find five in overtime. And furthermore, even more down the line, you know, we're going to need to see overtime wins. Four in a row, four out of six, you know, something. We need to see big, big opportunities seized by the CT side. And they're going to take a time out before they even begin. Can they do it? That's the big question. And the timeout is a necessity, isn't it? I mean, we sort of begged for Ecstatic to call a timeout in that first half. They didn't do it until very, very later on. But uh, yeah, 
it goes back to the same thing of what we've been saying consistently, where I think Ecstatic are not their usual selves, right? They're normally really, really good when it comes to team synergy. The crossfires are really part and parcel of their play style. They make them look so dominant. Hence why they're 21 ranked in the world. But yeah. now it seems that like they've gone back to this heavy reliance on individuals. And when the big name individuals aren't stepping up, you know, you look over towards Wolfie, right? I don't want to keep isolating him, but it hasn't been his best performance. He's been a real standout player. Not looking on tip-top shape, Fasher, the star rifle, going negative. These kind of things are where ecstatic. Even though, yeah, the individuals aren't as good as usual, there's still way too much of Myers relying on them. And that's why Blinker found 15 one away from taking their opponent's map pick in their favor and heading on to Ancient with a chip on their shoulder. But Birth of Sky 4, what a start. Rigon, oh my good god, Rigon, he finds two, Dafu to trade, but we've been in this situation all too often. Smoke's down, Molly's out, flashes are in, Juan Flatro making his move, and we know what he likes to do with smokes. We know what he likes to do when he's working against the oh. grade, and he's going to jump right Brilliant. over the top, and it's a double from him. Manx against it all, and Blink's charge is complete. Juan Flatro with a triple, and that is it. Map one in the bag, we go to a break. <laughs> When we are back, map two up next. It's Blink's map pick. It's time to see Ancients. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Map number two getting underway. Blink, a brilliant start for them. It's eight down. Ecstatic on their pick of Vertigo. And I'll head on to theirs of Ancients with a map under their belt. But can they continue this brilliant run of form? I'm Nerekai, joined by the lovely Retro. And here we go, already fast play, ecstatic on the CT side, we need to see something fantastic from the Manx. Little to no damage done with the USP, Synopsy will find the opener, and already that cave control, you know, established by the T side, weird enough, but also, look it out towards Zay, the bodies are flying and flooding at the masses, it is an A execute, it's Dafu in a 1 on 5, nice first shot, but it does not matter, it doesn't change the outcome. It is a clear-cut victory here for Blink and the Pistol. First time we've seen it's all oh, Blink and a Pistol. I mean, we always sort of toted that uh, ecstatic on their pistol rounds, a very, very clean car, methodical, and it always seems to work in their favor. And this time, Blink do exactly what I asked them when at times things weren't looking good for them. Hold W. Just get in their face. It's all you need to do. Ecstatic... If you give them room to work with, they'll consistently put you on the back foot. What you've got to do is counter their sort of passivity with your aggression. And that's what they do brilliantly. They flood on towards that A site, prioritize getting that bomb down, and set up the post plant where it gives no room for Ecstatic to work with. That's how you're meant to play a pistol around against a side like Ecstatic, who are normally so secure on them. And what it means is uh, they get a first run under their belt, and of course, a full buy to follow suit. Yeah, really cheeky stuff to see from them, of course, that into this round, it is no different. It is... No change. Lining up the util, maybe here, Manx. Just the uh, the flashbang, ready to swing. And there you have it. First frag, synopsy. It is a masterclass. Three kills for him. Rigon will find the fourth. Doesn't matter anyway. Last man, Manx, with a USP and everything to do in this round. No chance. All five survive and blink to a second. Yes, yeah, brilliant. Easy stuff there. 2-0. Expected, let's be honest, of course, when you come in with that, that, that significant difference in terms of firepower. You know, you always expect to go that way. And that's exactly what happens. Well, 2-0 start. Look at the pinnacle odds are 1.21 compared to 4.4. Things are really starting to favor Blink. And, you know, deservedly so as well. They've been a real consistent factor, putting up some monstrous rounds on the board. And off the back of a pretty decent map number one on their belt against Ecstatic's best map in their entire pool. Heading on to Ancient. They must be feeling so confident. Here we go. Smokes being dropped in. Taking their sweet, sweet time in this round here, Blink. No fast plays, no running around, taking heads off. It's really winding down here, Neo. Nice little spam from Bird from Sky. Trying to do the tag damage, doing everything they can. On the flip side of things, Molly burning away. Bird from Sky taking a considerable chunk of health. A minute and 13 to go, but Blink actually somehow... Winding down to no advantage or disadvantage. It is just as it is. Start as you mean to go on. That shot, Fasher, rig on falls, and I've already. Things are starting to look pretty comfortable. You look at Double Down, he won't be given the opportunity because Burford Sky for the trade, but Wolf Beyond is back. Find advantage so far in their favor that you'd expect the CT side to come on top. 
but a bomb plant at the very least is a positive sign. Yeah, not no. terrible. Synopsy hit that as well. Onto Mike's. All right, not bad. <laughs> bomb ticking. Time being expended here, waiting for the retake to come through. Flash drops in, Juan Flatro, he'll turn in, right back out. Nicely done, one for one trade. Wouldn't expect this second though. And in turn, it's a freebie there for Blink. A third round, denying ecstatic of that full by response. And already three rounds on the T side of Ancient out of the three rounds played. If I'm honest with you, you know, I'm starting to get very, very worried immediately for this ecstatic side. Usually, we talk double digits when it comes to, you know, Ancient CT sides. And, you know, if you've got off to this poor of a start, more than likely you're going to concede a fourth here as well. You know, the chance of supplying a, a decent half for your for your own selves here, actually mm. minimising round by round, even at this point in the game. Yeah, exactly that. Well, of course, so far, 3-0. The full buy completely deteriorates and Ecstatic is back to the drawing board. This makes things very uncomfortable for them and they're not even going to go for a gamble stack. It's just a standard play here, two over towards A. The donor player rotating back, looking for a fight in his favour. It's only that MP9 of Bird from Sky as the real investment in towards round number four. Time slipping. Really winding down that pace. Nothing much going on right now. Still that five on five. One flat throw. Oh, man. This positioning. You wouldn't expect this, would you? He's already spotted the back of Wolfie. You know, you've shifted out towards A. Manx has no clue where a couple of these players are. Juan Flatro, just got to check to your to your left, mate. You've allowed him to slip out middle. Oh, all the game of timing. <laughs> GXX has got him covered, though. That'll be the don't, or rather the don't player spotted. Now Manx on the back of the site has to go huge. Sineri sticking the bomb plant. They haven't cleared the back of the site. And well, a four on four. Bomb in the open. Yeah, bomb still yet to go down. 40 seconds to work with. A look at this. A rig on. Brilliant. Find yourself only one. Oh, you look at deer in headlights. Too many positions to look forward to. And just like that, it's left it all up in the air. Bomb still yet to go down. Now, of course, it will be planted. Both plants to be set up. And what can the orb find? The orb finds a missed shot, but a snopsy from behind makes this more comfortable for them. Leaving it down to one. Birth of Sky, one versus two. And I think his number may be up. Big damage. Any more could be done. They hear the nade go forward, but they don't expect his teammate to lie within. GXX going to pick up the fourth round here of this game so far. Wow. What? I mean, how does this start come about? Your fours are up on the T side of Ancient. Yeah. That in itself is, you know, uh, a big, big lead. Yeah, when you discuss Ancient as well, right? You look at some of the more CT sounding maps in the pool. I think Nuke is definitely up there. Train was up there as well. But, you know, arguably Ancient is the most CT sided map, right? So, to pick up four rounds already to fantastic start. And normally I say five or six is good enough. And Blink should be able to put more on the board. But Wolfie comes alive. Rig on a four. And that's a good start at the very least for Ecstatic here. Get to see the AWP in action of Wolfie, but not done just yet. Manx, his AWP will find one on the mark. One flat throw out of this round. Four down to three. Blink. I guess just got to play whatever they can, right? Find yourselves any advantage back into this round. Any lead that you can take. You've just got to run with it. Molly dropped in. In a sweet, sweet time on this. Execute, but from Skype. Sniffs out, said Opsy. Right through the smoke. Five on two scenario. And GXX now have to go absolutely huge. Yeah, they need to. The question is, can they? Senery holding to try and find out. I think he'd be given a freebie, but the freebie goes the way of Dafu. GXX falls all down to one man. It could be a flawless one for Ecstatic, with him barely even taking a point of damage. But I say that Fasha will fall. Smoker dropped in towards the cut off that rotation. But. In a one versus four of half HP, I think his number's already up. It might just be a save call here. Yeah, no doubt about it. 30 seconds to go, and well, he'll be given no option to save. They close the window, close the gap, and shut the lights off. Sineri, he shall drop. And so, the first run of the board here for Exatic on the CT side. I think we'd have expected it a little bit later than, or rather earlier yeah. than that, though, here, Neo. You know, winning the full buy meant a lot. Blink to take an early timeout here. Still, same old, same old. You know, we move forward. Blink still have the advantages, still have the money to reinvest, still have everything to their name. 
I think it's just a matter of now, I guess, patiently waiting to see, can they pick up this round, reset that CT economy once more, and make it even more difficult for, for the other side, for Ecstatic, yeah. to get back into it. Exactly, exactly that, right? I mean, uh, they are patiently waiting for opportunities to work with. The question is, can they? Right? I think we've seen, of course, now a first one on the board gives them room to work with, but is it enough? They were given these opportunities when it comes down to map number one, and they had this sort of failure to convert them and failure to find consistency, which was something we mentioned uh, quite a lot, you know, in, in a, especially that pregame segment, of course, the postgame as well, right? It was that consistency where really ecstatic lacked, hence why. All it took was Blink finding forms of momentum for them to close out map number one. And so far, they're looking like exactly the same course. But this is an opportunity. The economy is pretty dire straits for Blink. A couple of hero AKs coming through, but it's a full investment, which is very risky. Spam coming out. GXX taking a bit of damage, but it's actually ecstatic worse for wear. Nades drops in. Oh, Zafu finds the opener. The wall bank straight through Synopsy. Caught off guard, four on four scenario. Could be made out of it, but no, Fasha to deny it's still a five on three. It's still ecstatic with all five alive. He's actually going to be pressuring in here towards ramp. One flat throw, got to clear this angle. The shadow game given up. The second frag here for Fasha. And oh, he finds all three out on ramp. A 4k for him in the round. And that's the Fasha we know that can turn up to the server. Ecstatic, carried to a second round, single-handedly by this man. And round seven, of course, a bit of troubled water for Blink to get back into because they now have to take an eco themselves. Yeah, they do. And it, uh, I desperately needed one. They went for that sort of, I call it a very risky investment and the risk didn't pay off. The reward wasn't in their hands and they get completely shut down. The hero AK by, I mean, you very rarely see it converted to sort of comfortability, right? It's always kind of more of a bit of a hero play that maybe just damages the long-term economy of your opposition. But yeah, as you mentioned, you know, for Blink now, just a Glock's coming through, one Deagle to try and make things work, and the priority is getting that bomb down. Absolutely. Orb shot misses. Manx, a Ooh. second shot misses. You've given up the site. It's a five on four, admittedly. Don't agree with the aggressiveness taken here. Scenarios to keep things competitive. Bomb being set down and denied of it. If Blink slowed things down, they'd have got a gold bomb plant out of that one. Instead, they go aggressive, and they give ecstatic easy, easy aim jewels. They pick the kills up. And it is a third on the board here for the CT side. The promising factor is, Neo, we do get to see a buy heading into round eight. A chance for Blink exactly. to continue their lead. Yeah, for me, I think they're, sl they're slightly overextended. I think it's probably a uh, good way to put it. And uh, they should have prioritized getting that bomb down. A bit of a meat shield as well to allow it some more security. But not what happens. Uh, third round collected. Ecstatic one round behind. So much better. But still, in my eyes, not good enough. Right? I mean, four rounds already for Blink. It's not even the end of the world on Seaside. So... Things are starting to look a little bit more uncomfortable, but good amount of utility coming through. Rig on up to 51 points of HP and a good amount of control here both ways. Taking their time. Having a little peep around. Just still looking for this control. Dafu holding aggro. But from Sky does take a bit of damage, but he's able to find the opener out towards the aggressive ramp push. Gain themselves that 5 on 4 advantage. Something they've been lurking after for quite some time as you can see blink just taking their sweet sweet time themselves nothing more than the four ak's and they've still got all five players from ecstatic to face well these might damage as well as burn from sky but not really too problematic rigor's got control over those cave though and actually this b site very very vulnerable this gamble for here from ecstatic look like it might not pay off but it all depends on the timing which blink wants to use smoke coming through as well and burn from sky now the sort of solo guardian as double smoke comes through they're gonna be able to give him a free plan here as you said bomb gonna be set down or is it oh, is it? Oh, wow. deny Really nice nade usage from him. They're going to continue to try and hold things up and set things down. Bomb. Slam down one flat row. Looking for the shot. Can't quite connect. That's a bit worrying. Now continuing to go aggressive. Continuing to move forward. One flat row will find another. Traded out by Fasha. A second frag for him and Max to find the last. It's a clean swoop of a retake. And ecstatic. They'll find themselves level four for the score. Yeah, it's a really nice retake. And of course, I think it goes to the other side of things as well. That it wasn't really that excessive anything particularly amazing to make that retake work. But I think Blink played it really poorly. You know, they had complete control of the site. It was only actually um, the likes of Birth and Sky making his way forward. 
Uh, and yeah, they just completely fumbled that one for me. It's a tough decision. A tough thing to say, but uh, credit where credit's due. They tie this game back up 4-4. Four, four. Expected on uh, CT side of Ancient. But well, for Blink, that's not good enough. They need to have more consistency. And that post part was pretty poorly executed. Very overzealous, overextended, gave way too many opportunities to Ecstatic, and they took them. Yeah, absolutely. Heading into this round, of course, it is no different, but maybe a slight different outcome here. First kill in the favor of Juan Flatro. The AWP, though, the AWP is potent. It does find two. Manx finally drops. Not before he goes down without a fight, though. Wolfie continuing to try and hold on to the Lessi. But it's Fasher's rifle to deliver the goods, and all of a sudden, this round turns quite pear-shaped here. As the uh, the pistols, the upgraded half bite starts to fall. It is merely down to Synopsy to try and hold on to the dreams and hopes here. Of the T side of finding a fifth, I don't think it's going to happen. So for the first time this game, we actually see ourselves to an ecstatic lead here on Ancient. Yeah, finally managing to find their footing. And now Blink, for me, they need to call some sort of a timeout here. Things are not looking good. They've lost their head a little bit. And, of course, the biggest thing is that they're going to have a buy coming through, right? So they need to be able to effectively utilize it. Because it can go back into this brutal, harsh cycle where, you know, you find a, a full buy in your favor and the inability to convert it leaves them back at square one. But, uh, no, they're going to full send in. No real game plan coming in here. They're just going to go for it. Five to four on the scoreboard. Ecstatic up. One round ahead, as you mentioned, and most likely looking like they're going to pull further away. And absolutely. Here goes absolutely nothing. Everything needs to be sent into this round. Blink, find the opener. Dafu finds two. Rigon's got to be careful. He's looking for the trade, but of course the rifle holds strong. A triple for Dafu in this round, and surely the hopes and dreams quite quickly crushed. And it is merely GXX and Juan Flatro to keep the hopes alive. What a round from Dafu. What a round to step yeah. up. And he just does it effortlessly. A couple of players here to go. And I don't think they're going to have much of a problem in finding the last couple. Nicely done. GXX good for one. One flat throw shall be silenced. It's really comfortable, isn't it? Super, super easy. And, uh, you know, credit credit to you, actually. Ecstatic play that very comfortably. When things aren't looking good, they know that the mental for a blink isn't in a strong period. They go aggressive because they know they're not going to be really on their toes. That's exactly what we see. Dafu finding that double brilliantly, finding the trade, netting them a minor advantage, and all they have to do is keep it. Stunning stuff. 3k to his name means that, of course, Ecstatic pull further away. 6-4 to four and a blink back to the drawing board. No buy coming in apart from that one hero, AK, one flat We've already, already spoke about how few we see them converted. Absolutely. All the shots in the world happening. Synopsy, got to be careful, turns away, great flashbang, great intuitiveness, Bird from Sky delivers grand numbers here. Looking for the spam, Bird from Sky, just looking to create opportunities, not going to happen here. By the looks of things, I think it's safe to say, 5 on 4 situation, Blink already with a bit of a weak investment, not too many chances to be taken in this one here, Neo. Oh, yeah, exactly. Missed shot, but I don't think it really matters at this point. As long as they can close out this round, that's all that's key. Yeah, that's the main bit. I think it's probably going to be the case as well. Just a matter of timing. Manx peeking forward, finding one to his name, repositioning, second in towards. Donut and a reaction's brilliant. We're going to fall. At the seventh collected, ecstatic one away from winning the half, and deservedly so as well. They have been brilliant when it comes to their CT side performances. They've deserved of this lead that they're starting to build up. A nice three round gap. And most likely case that they're going to further extend it because they're completely dictating the tempo and the play style at the moment. And Blink can't keep up. The worrying part of it all, as you can see, right? Ecstatic really pulling the, the strings that were needed. Yeah. And Manx pinpoint with the AWP. Round 12, Blink. They are down 7-4, Neo. They are conceding currently seven in a row, but something we've got to note here, right? Ooh. Okay, great shot from Buff from Sky, but... Something to note here, all in all, is that actually four rounds on the T side isn't terrible. It's winnable. No. I think, you know, we're just expecting to see more from a 4-0 scoreline. Missed shot from Manx, though. That has cost a lot of ground out towards A. Yeah, exactly. That. It's not the end of the world, but it's still not great. Nice, healthy nade coming through. Rig on a centenary, taking the bulk of it. That's one flash, and it's only the ones to fall. Bomb still yet to go down, and Rig on... Stuck between a rock and a hard place, lets himself one, but it's only one, and Manx clean up duties for him, calling the janitors, they start to find eight, a four-round lead, and 
It goes back to exactly what I'm saying of ecstatic dictating the tempo on their play style and Blink having this just pure inability to keep up. And you know what we mentioned when we speak about Vertigo, where Blink were in a real hard spot. For me, I said that all they had to do was go aggressive. It's what nets them a pissed around to keep to start things. And this, for, for me, is what they need to do coming into here. Maybe not this exact round, but the next full by coming forward, it being either round 14 or 15, just go aggressive. Hold W and just hope that they can net themselves a fifth. You might be right. You really might be right. Feels like they're, they're struggling for ideas, really. Struggling for room as well. Bird from Skype finds the opener. up. And Blink all of a sudden, you know, conceding the early advantages, conceding the later rounds. What can they do heading into this one? Flashbang goes in deep. Dafu still assuming that aggressive angle. Spam coming in. They won't quite find anything. Spam from Rigon though. His deagle connects. Nade. Thought it could have been good for a lot more. But from Sky has to back away. So a four on four. Respect is shown. AK picks up with a dink through middle. All right. Not bad at all. What do they do with it though, Neo? That's what they've been struggling to do so far. Yeah. It's the outcome of the round, not how they get there. Let's see how they play. Oh, Wolfie, that's so quick. Spots one. Second is all well spotted, but the shot not connected. GXX all alone now. Find himself one, but he's three more to the tally to come out with this one on top, and it's not going to happen. A 9-4 collected. Heading into the penultimate round, Blink are really starting to falter. A five-round deficit, similar to what we saw on Vertigo, and in a similar fashion, Vertigo ecstatic couldn't come back into it, and it's looking like Blink won't be able to do the same either. This is begging for a map number three here. Mm. The stars are aligning. Blink, timeout taken. Talk things through. What's going on? Just have to wait and well, see. Things aren't going well, are they? I mean, Blink uh, are really faltering here. They started so brilliantly as well, off the back of a pistol. You know, see, even the first full by round, working very comfortably in their favour. And then from then, they've completely petered out. And this is nine rounds consecutively for Ecstatic. And no matter what you say, that should never, ever happen. No, absolutely not. And here we are. Round 11, coalesce. Or rather, sorry, blink at four. Static nine. I was going to say, make the link. We saw Gruce's uh, stats at aim trainer currently playing against coalesce. So if you're interested in the aim trainer, of course. Make sure to go and check that one out. TEB.GG4 slash 3D aim trainer. Something maybe that Blink have done in the meantime. Practicing those B executes. Finally, one pays off here, Neo. Four on two. Ecstatic. They are going to crumble on this B site. Orp against four effectively right now. The K flank nowhere to be seen. Fash up. Finding one with the AK though. Getting back into business is a key thing to do. And for Blink, they need to close out this round, but they just can't quite find the numbers, Neo. A two on four, and Synopsy now left alone. Surely not, right? In this situation, one versus four was such a low amount of HP, but Fascia will fall. And of course, just the AD with Pete's take down. He could be caught in transition, he will do. Manx pulls out the Deeg, and that's good enough to clean this one up. Double digits collected, and Ecstatic are pulling further and further away. And deservedly so as well. Blink, then a shadow of their former selves, not the side that we saw dominate birds go and start off so brilliantly in towards Ancient. And this being their map pick, I mean, this is just not what we want to see from them at all. Absolutely so. Round 15, the last of the half. Neo, in a four on two, you should be converting. And if that isn't exactly. a demoralizer, I don't know what is. Wolfie, or aggressive towards the plat position. One flat rope, serious damage taken early doors. Doesn't matter though, he's facing back towards middle, but missed shot from the AWP up. Ecstatic, maybe a bit too overzealous. Costing them the early man here. Five on four, GXX to find another. Don't get too comfortable though, because there Ooh. is a thorn in your side. As Dafu continues to tear apart Blink. Now a three on three, but the HP lead disintegrated. And Ecstatic now back in form. And it was Dafu's name as well who he sort of sung his praises of in coming into this game. And someone who, if he pops off, ecstatic, just become unstoppable. And that's exactly what we're seeing. 
But of course, now back to the man advantage in favor of Blink, and finally an opportunity for them to find a fifth. They've struggled to even get this close before, and it's going to be Ritz and obviously adding one more to his tally for Dafu, of course. We sing his name and he comes alive, but of course he needs an ace in the round to clutch this out. And surely, Red Show, this is a task too tall. Oh, you really got to be kicking yourself now. Blink, they will find five. It's rig on to find the last. And there you have it. 10-5 at the halftime whistle. Five rounds, good enough on the T side. 10 on the CT is good enough as well, Neo. I think both sides yeah. could be happy with that performance. I think Blink, though, will be kicking themselves a little bit that maybe, you know, they could have found themselves a bit more uh, momentum, a couple more rounds, and, you know, we could be looking at a 2-0. But as you said, instead, you know, getting 10 rounds on the CT side really could spell disaster and in turn could see this go the distance. Yeah, as we predicted as well, you know, right? We kind of came into this saying Blink need at least kind of five to six rounds to make this somewhat doable. But it's a 10-5 half, exactly the same half that we saw on Vertigo on the other way around. But uh, this one just seems way more skewed over towards Ecstatic. Let's see how things play out. Mr. Run coming forward and it's 2-1 uh, in favor of Ecstatic and Mr. Run so far. But when Flasho starts off brilliantly and spots the bomb too. That's loads of information and all the bodies there as well that he knows now. That's all there. Synopsy finds one more. They have to commit for the frontal force. They can't afford to look behind. And Sineri's gunned down Bird from Sky through the smoke. Plucks him out. Another kill found. It's not going to be flawless, but it's sure as hell more might as well be. Sineri to find the last. Stunning. An ecstatic count out on a sixth. It is Blink that take the pistol. And it is getting that little bit more intense, Neo. You win the pistol, both on here and Ancient hit. And Ecstatic, now the gap down to four. Possible to come back from, especially being on that CT side. Yeah, I mean, the pistol pros have been put in their place. Ecstatic are normally borderline flawless when it comes to pistol runs. But heading into his Ancient, not the case. 0 for 2. And a sixth round collected. A first kind of real test of a buy coming through because the, the positive sign for ecstatic the silver lining of a what was a really poor pistol on overall is they got that bomb down right and the bomb means that they can get somewhat of a security buy coming through and that's what we see double glill double double glill single ak is not the end of the world spam's coming in dafu coming aggressive the m4 of one flat row caught out not the greatest of starts he's gonna go dig in here to find the gun. GXX will find Fasher in the meantime. So the M4 picked up by the CT side here. But of course, the numbers game still level. That tempo comes a bit of a grinding halt as well. Ecstatic are looking for information. And of course, on the other side of things, they want to bait out as much utility as they can. You know, you look over towards the CT side and they've only got one flash to work with now. So it's not a comfortable situation for them. They've expended their last smoke. While well, Ecstatic still have one ready and waiting. And we mentioned this in Vertigo. They're very good at holding their utility to late game. And this could work massively in their favour in this 4 versus 4. Time ticking. Seconds passing. And of course that gives the CT side so much more leverage in these situations. Spam coming out. Won't quite connect. Rigon now going to be tested. Manx needs to find this kill. That he has. M for A1S of Synopsy. M for one though. And M for a second. The Rifler does it true. Does it justice as Dafu now with a lot on his plate. But GXX to deny a third. And it is all down to Bird from Sky. From the four on four. A single casualty. And Bird from Sky wants nothing to do with this round. It's going to be an easy conversion. It's going to be a seventh for Blink. And in turn actually a save here. Takes a lot of wind out of that ecstatic cell. I'd be surprised to see if they don't try and, you know, at least half buy around this AK. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the other side of the thing, right, is that for ecstatic, they haven't got a bomb plant, so they're really going to struggle economically. I mean, you see Wolfie Zero, Fasher had 100, now put it on 2,500. I mean, they've really not got a lot. And I think it may even be the other side of things where they might want to just stick it on that 2K mark. They can, of course, pick themselves up, you know, the Tech 9s if they want to, maybe, you know, a PG-50 and a utility. But sticking on the 2K mark for me, I think it's probably the smartest style of player. And, and then it goes to the other side of things with Birth from Sky. Just play a little bit more passive. You might want to drop that AK over towards Fasha. Actually, no, he's got the armor, so not really. Keep hold of it. Not the end of the world. But yeah, you know, sticking on 2K mark to give them a buy going forward is probably the smartest way to play. But as you mentioned, right, it's not, it's not the end of the world if they try to go for a force buy around this. Maybe a Mac 10 Maybe some Deagle Armour utility. It's all up to their decision. It's all up to, of course, the uh, the wonderful mind of Bird from the Sky. Can they get it done? 10-7.
really is in an arm's reach considering that economy on the T side as well. A conversation that will be had continually through this game between us, Neo. It's that finance here of Ecstatic. Yes. In the bin, Bird from Sky more than likely will have to save the rifle into the next round or pick up the round, either or. It is difficult for him to get an AK full bite into round 19 if he falls in this round. They've got to be careful, understandably. So, 10-7 right now. Pistols merely around the AK and Ecstatic, I think, just looking for a way in. Gonna try and give a bit of room to work for for that AK to find anything. So we're gonna come through, but one flash is just gonna play in front of it, looking for the opportunity and actually sort of stuck between two places. Needs to be careful not to be caught in transition. Alright, round 18, of course. Still a very dormant start to it. Hearing all the steps in the world, maybe the aggressive cave players. Gonna pick up on this information. Juan Flatro, what better man to have in this position? A quiet game so far. Finds one, only the one. Scenario to trade, but it's a four on three. All the information in their name. They have so much knowledge here, and it is merely a matter of time until they can decimate these rifles, take down the pistols, and it is now Wolfie's M4 against the world. Good for one, but Brilliant. silenced by Scenario. Eight rounds in favor of Blink. Textbook CSGO there from Blink. Just comfortable stuff, of course. They know they're coming against just that one hero, AK saved across from Birth and Sky. And all they have to do is play the trade game. And they do it excellently. It's stunning stuff to put a third consecutive round on the board. An eighth for them, making it a two-round deficit, which is very, very easy to catch up with. All it takes is uh, one broken economy. And they're right in charge once again, right in that driver's seat. Blink have come alive on their CT side. And, well, I think Retro is safe to say it's about time. Absolutely. Blink. Got to be careful with their next steps. This round, I think, means a lot more than most will think. Wind down that economy. That's what the ecstatic boys are looking to do. And they have done a great job in opening things up. Dafu, through the smoke, finds the head of one flat throat. Now, five on four. Blink, numbers game out of their hands. So now they have to take matters into their own. They have to find the advantage. They have to go aggressive for something. Do something on their own. Well, there we go. Fush opening things up. Senator your four swinging back in. Though Rig on good for one himself and staying alive is good enough. Just trying to wait enough time for the rotation to come through. And he actually managed to double down somehow. Bring it into a two versus three. Where that site is still compromised and the bomb is dropped. GXX. Looking for a way in. The AWP up. Looking to perform. The flash. We'll catch him a little bit, so decides to back away. But of course, the bomb is still in the open. That's why GXX was holding so aggressively, is they did have eyes on the bomb. Unfortunately for them, though, now with the util being brought forward, they don't have the same vision. Nice shot from Wolfie. Manx to find the last. And it is 11 to 8. Ecstatic making moves closer to 16 here. That's what matters. Precisely that. Things looking very good for Ecstatic. They're actually going against what the Pinnacle odds were saying. But of course, you can head over to Pinnacle. 10.gg4 slash welcome. Sign up using the code fall 21 100% deposit up to 100 euros. So, not check that one out. But so far, it's a little bit better from Ecstatic. They uh, struggled to find that consistency. I think they just needed one round to kick start their momentum. And now they found it. Can they use this as a catalyst to closing out a map number two? We'll take a look at this. Memphis guy going aggressive. Boy, was one flash throw who doubles down with a 5 7, no less. Wow. Look <laughs> at this. I don't believe what we're watching, Neo. A 5 7, as you said, and it's done no. all the work. A 5 on 2. Wolfie and Dafu. Everything to do in this round. They haven't found an inch in on it. One flat throw, the man to tear it all away from them. Synopsy to go aggressive. Dafu caught lacking. And Wolfie now, an AWP against five. A monumental round for him to step up in. Will he be able to find one? Yes. Looking for a second. Back and forth between the angles. Missed shot. GXX to close the gap. But it's Rigon's P250 to pick it up. And it is one AWP and three AK saved on an eco from Blink. Heading into round 21. Not like this. See, the Battle of the Ecos is so... I mean, such a big factor looking forward. And the fact that they've come out on top like that... Wow, that is a real fumble when you take a look over towards <laughs> the ecstatic side. They had everything to work with, right? Nothing was looking bad for them at all. Completely in that driver's seat. And 
well, a double from a 5-7 is the turning point, the catalyst to a round in their favour to make it once again a two-round affair. And the biggest thing is ecstatic that economy looking in a dire state. So here we are, the spam wild, but of course, wham, flat throw, why not? Finding the open up. Smokes dropped in, Sinari caught off guard, Orp of GXX won't quite connect. Nicely done though, Juan Flatro's double, GXX is third, and Synopsis fourth to close the B push. That is that. Super impressive stuff to see, and of course double digits yeah. now for that CT side. Precisely that, really nicely done. Well, 10-11. Double digits collected is the biggest thing. It's a big thing in terms of, well, I mean, essentially when you look over towards confidence, right? I think that's a, a huge, huge factor for a blink. They've turned around from what was a, a, a poor first off. I think it's safe to say. I think, you know, we said that five or six rounds is good enough, but it was a five or six rounds that didn't really seem deserved. And now they've turned around. Much better on their CT side, and it's good looking the other way. Or ecstatic, or looking lackluster to say the least since coming into the side back to the drawing board back to a full eco for them with just the upgraded pistols coming out a small amount of armor a small amount of utility so here we go ecstatic now gotta have key performance big damage maybe a smoke in their face and manx's missed shot gonna fluff up their chances for an early advantage and that nade most certainly will not help chunks taken out of manx and dafu don't quite believe it. Five on five, yes, but ecstatic. Have to make up for the numbers. Have to make up for the early disadvantages. Flashbang in. Sineri, only good for one. The pistols, hold of a second. Ecstatic putting up no. a fight as well. It's a three on two. Surely not Blink doing exactly what ecstatic did to them. Right back at ya. The battle of the ecos are so important, but surely not like this. Marigon's holding. That's a smart hole. Swing and fight forward. Wolfie finds one more to his tally. It's still very doable for Rigon, but the AK-47 might be his best friend in this situation. Both low on HP. How does he want to play it? Trying to maneuver his way forward. A smoke going towards the front-hand side of the bomb. And he might just stick this. No He's got a kit. No way. No way. No way. Oh my god, Rigon, he's sticking in. Oh my god, Dafu. One bullet the difference. He was milliseconds off of defusing that bomb, Neo. And the eco once again happening. This time in favour for Ecstatic. And that might just be the turning point of this game. Oh, that was it. That was the opportunity which, if it had been converted, I think Blink could have done enough to close this one out. But... Whew, one eagle shot through the smoke was enough to close it out. It was too close for comfort. Still a two-round lead, which is a tentative two-round lead at that, but... Ecstatic, very close for comfort. Absolutely. And you can hear the util being dropped in already. Flash being dipped in. Nades out. Blink. Oh, gotta be careful. Spam in. Sinari to find one. One flat throw with the second. And that's bomb. Just in the mouth of the cave system. They've got themselves a big, big lead in this one. Ecstatic now looking to pick it up. But it's rig on towards middle to find a third. He's not done just yet. Holding the shift key. Going forward into the jaws of Manx. And it is now down to Fasher in a one on five. What a turnaround here. And Ecstatic a little bit puzzled. Confused. Dazed by the performance yeah. here. By Blink rattling them right after an eco. Straight back in their faces. And it might just be an 11th on the board. Senery to find, and he will do exactly that, but still, I mean, not a lot of room to work, or he's been hunted from all angles, but at least doubling it down, giving himself room to work with, Blinker giving him the one versus ones, all you have to do is play the trade game here, but they're given room for Fasher to work with, and of all the ways to pick up a 13th, this would be special, as he finds a third to his name, but takes a significant damage no in doing so. One versus two. At the very least, he's made it expensive, but it's HE to close this one out as Blink once again pull it within one. That became very, very close. But it's still 12-11 in favor of Ecstatic. But the economy is going to be a bit of a dicey one. They could pick up a buy, right? It's not the end of the world. Manx, yep. of course, could pick up an AK armor. Bird from Sky is going to opt for something, maybe a little bit middling. You'll see our Tech 9 come through alongside the full support of the utility. It's all to play for. This is the defining point, I'd say, to say, to say. You know, if Blink pick this one up, tie it up, this could be them closing this series out 2-0.
Molly in smoke to put it out. Surely you know the aggression's there, and yes, they do. One kill, two kills, one flat throw, only good for the initial, though. So it is a three on three, and they continue to digress out towards the site. Synopsy got to be careful for the side swipe as Dafu picks him up, and it's Rigon and GXX. Lightning fast B take, and it works out for them. What can the orb do here as well? GXX. You a lot of room to work with. Oh, but it only finds the tag. That is so unfortunate. Molotov kind of giving room to work with, and he won't be able to deliver. He falls to the Galil, and it's all down to one man. And from the flank, Bird from Sky pincers with the likes of Dafu as they static just about live to see another day. 13 to 11. They're clinging on for dear life and denying Blink from tying this game up. And of course, on top of that, they break their economy. Blink taking a timeout as well. They want nothing to do with the comeback happening, and they just want to cut circulation here. My question is, $1,900 loss bonus, your money yeah. is okay. Do you go for a buy here and, and just invest it all and see if you can deny them of a 14th? Or do you play an eco? Play for that 14-11 and give yourself minimal opportunity to respond and you merely have to just win all the rest. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, right? I, I think with such a sort of small loss bonus, it's... I think a risk is probably a safe way to put it, but uh, it's a tough situation, right? You've got to feel for Blink. What's wearing through their heads at the moment is actually they're going to double down. They're forcing into this retro. I don't believe it. I don't quite believe it. That's so risky. I mean, okay, fine. They've converted it once before, but that was uh, off the back of a, a beaut of a, a double from Van Flatcher of a 5-7, which is surely not going to happen again. Surely. Surely. Round 25, Smoke drops in, one flat throw, evading it, gap on the right hand side, he'll be working around, lurking within, long pressure, look at this, hold on a second, Rigon, he's got super aggressive out towards A, they know that there's no one out on A, they know it's going to be more or less the B play, I'm surprised we don't see more resources committed to it. All three remaining players ready and raring to go. Nice shot from Morphe, though. Will they expect the second man to be there? Doesn't matter. He's not peeking anyway. Max will find Juan Flatro. Five on three situation. And this is where things get dicey. Because not only now have you cost yourself the two-man advantage, you have nothing to show for it either. A nice shot from GXX. But it's still a four on three. It is still the HP game. Well and truly in favor of uh, Xtafan. Yeah, I think for me as well, Blink is overextended there. They don't need to do that. But Wolfie missing a second shot, second time round, could give Rigon work, room to work with. But he finds the tag, and it's all down to Empho when S is unable to deliver on the site. And MP9 with 14 points of HP is easily cleaned up. Ecstatic, I'd say actually they're quite fortunate. It's a misplay from Blink. They overextend. They actually had a really good understanding. As we mentioned, you know, they cleaned out into a main. They had that pincer set up. All they had to do was wait. Play timing to their favor, and they didn't. They overextend, give a freebie over towards Wolfie, who was holding and waiting. Mike's gets given one as well over towards Ramp, and little by little, they just chipped them away. Blink have faltered, and Blink are left with nothing. USB is to come out into round number 26, which could be, or probably should be, giving up 15 to Ecstatic. We'll see. Five man stack here on K. Flashes are forward. Sineri finds the opener. Hold on a second. Hold on a no second. Way. No way. The USPs doing the damage, but Manx. A triple to resume normality. Fasha will find the last. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. As close as you like. 260 HP of damage done before you even found yourself on the kill feed. But it is meant to be a 15 11. Blink. Four in a row to complete the, uh, the test of tenacity. Four in a row for overtime. For ecstatic, one more round to take us to a decider. Unfortunately as well, I just don't think they have it in them. It's just not really been Blink's map. You know, that was a poor first half. And the second half, while I had moments of brilliance, it's just not been consistent. Which was the biggest fault for ecstatic. But Rickon's got a sound cue though. He's heard a lot of information. AUG scope in. It's Fasho just deletes him. And Wolfie adds one more to his tally. I think this may be it, Retro. Oh, it's a five on four. Actually, now a three on two. What's got on? There's so many kills in the feed. Fortunately, Ecstatic able to make it level. And of course, why not? Wolfie will find the last. And it will be a 16 next to the Ecstatic name. We go to a third and final map. We go the distance in this series. Join us after the break to find out who's going to take this one home. Is it going to be Ecstatic or will Blink return?
Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Map number three of this Titanic of a series so far. Ecstatic versus Blink has pushed it all the way to Inferno and a knife round to the side. Who will be starting where? It's looking like it might already be cleaned up immediately. Rigon left all alone and unable to convert. Ecstatic taken. We'd expect probably a CT star. My name is and I'm joined once again, of course, by Retro. Hello, hello. We're, uh, we're into the things... Thick and fast, eh? Yeah. There's uh, a lot going on. Not a lot to, to sort of touch on. Too well hit. Merely just is. We're jumping into the deep end. It is effectively a BO1 to determine who plays extra salt in the grand finals. Exactly. And, uh, well, who is going to be the team to do so? A dominant performance on Blink's uh, first map. I say Blink's first map because they won it, but it was actually Ecstatic's map pick. And of course we headed to Ancient, which was deemed to be the 2-0 time. And in fact, Ecstatic took the test and passed with flying colours out on Ancient. So we're left here on Inferno, where all good best of three is end. Yeah, hey, honestly, it's the most fabled final map of best of three, isn't it? It's always Inferno. But it's one of those things, both of these two sides, it's one of their comfort picks. You know, you look over towards Ecstatic, the second most picked map. And uh, you look over towards like, the Blink, and it's tied with their most picked map. So... Both these two sides, very, very happy to go into his Inferno. And it's just all about, when it comes down to it, playing is like a best of one. Who comes out flying the most? We saw Blink start great, but finish poorly. That needs to be a good start here if they want an, even a shred of a chance. If Ecstatic fire momentum, they'll run away with it. Well, there you go. Juan Flatro, he'll find the opener. Bird from Sky, gone. Ecstatic, got to find the trades. Got to find these opportunities here, Neo. Nothing from it just yet. Millie just is the test of time. Flash drop forward. Dafu goes in. Yes, he finds the frag. Rig on to trade, though. Not all bad. Ecstatic. Three on four situation. Manx, he'll find one more. So leveling out the numbers. Blink looking like they're going for the B execute. But actually, hold on a minute. It's all a hoax. They're right up middle. Only man to defend here is Fasha. They've absolutely bamboozled the Ecstatic side. It's brilliant. Oh, what a really nice call. One flash just playing the lurk role. Excellently. Fasher coming in to support. It might be too little too late. Smoke dropped in towards Moto. And now they're going to be getting a free plant coming down. Sec safe and securely over towards Short. As Senori trying to hold off the rotations. But Wolfie comes in from Short himself. Finding one. Fasher to the tally. And it's all down to Senori. They know exactly where he was. So they're going to go aggressive in towards that. Try and deny any opportunity. Find himself one. Knows the stick isn't coming through as well. And all he has to do is try and play time. That was the kit. They did go for the five-second stick, but Wolfie didn't oh, know where he brilliant. was. And Sineri's found another. A one-on-one. -on -one. Lights out. X-ray off. Where's Manx? He's going in aggro. He's pushing up close. Sineri can't quite find it. They've got the kit on the site. They've got the time. Manx is going to stick it. What a round. As close as you like. Couldn't find the mark. That got right down to the wire. And this sums up this series. It has been as even as it comes between these two sides. But it's ecstatic. Who just about pipped them at the finish line. With a, oh, a nice swing coming in and a retake just about successfully working in their favor. 1-0 star, but of course for Blink, they made it very expensive. They found a bomb plant and 4 out of 5 kills, which means for them, they're going to be given the opportunity to buy into this. We're going to see Galil's come through, maybe an opportunity for Senri to pick himself up an AK-47. With bomb plants and 2 kills, it's not the end of the world, so it could be collected. But if I know, they're just going to go for the pistols and play for a much more safe and secure buy in towards round number 3. All right, let's see how it fares. Nade, Bliss, Fash up. Finds the opener without fun, firing a bullet. Bird from Sky dropping the molly. That's going to segregate these two teams. But unfortunately for Blink, they tried to pressure through it. They tried to find the opportunities. Nothing found from it. Fasha anticipating the boost. Back and forth between the two angles. Looking for the leverage. But I think anticipating that the MP9 of Wolfie here should be picking up both frags. And well, there you go. Big damage. Even more done. Wolfie, he'll find one. They know where Synopsy is. He's going to scoop up the Deagle. Nice shot to one. Wolfie gone. Fasha, second man in. Tags up. Not quite the kill. Baiting in the shots. Ooh. Does a second bit of damage as well. Not quite the kill. Ecstatic a second. Now we get a little bit expensive, but yeah, comfortable stuff. Ecstatic, come on and stop. And of course, those pinnacle odds are starting to heavily favour them. 1.42 compared to the 2.79. Understandably so as well, because when you talk about a big, big factor, which is of course... Is that a momentum? The momentum has to be all in the sails of the likes of Ecstatic. A 1611 on their opponent's map pick of Ancient, starting off with a pistol round under their belt. You can see why Pinnacle are favoring them. They're in a really good you know, position and opportunity 
to take map number three of this series. Just the question of can they do it? Snob now up towards mid. Slight gap in that smoke, but Rigon very fortunate to still be alive. Wolfie, he finds the opener, closing that blink gap even more so. Fascist grenade. Two grenades he's thrown in the previous two rounds. And he's found himself two kills from it. Wolfie. Patiently waiting for their opportunity to strike. Silence across the board right now. Merely just waiting out the seconds, taking their time. Wolfie getting the info play out on long. Swings in. Beautiful timing. Scenario caught out. And it's worrying here for Blink. The buy goes bust here, Neo. And we'll in a 5 on 2. Ecstatic. 3 for nothing. 3 for nothing indeed, of course. Still. So far, so good. I'll say that one. Flacho. 1 to a Sally. Daffo a 4. Make that a second as he follows suit with Manx. And the long rotation being held off here. But a missed shot to be punished. GXX. That needed to be converted to get there's any sort of life in this round. I saw one flasher left all alone. Isolated in the one versus three. With 22 points of HP. A shred of life left in him. And probably not for much longer. Yeah, basically a breath away from death. And oh, flash no. up. Going to stare him down right in the eyes. Bullet between his eyes. And it gives Ecstatic their third. Made a little harder than it should be here, Neo. Let's not deny. Yeah, true. But of course, it is 3-0. It is Ecstatic in front. And uh, having said that as well, I think we were anticipating what was going to be quite an early start. Decent mm. lead obtained. But Blink still keeping things competitive. Instead, yes. it's completely not the case. You know, very, very one-sided. Well, well Flacho, he did enough. But, well, he did... What was thought like it should be enough, but it, it wasn't, right? I think that orb shot was the big factor there. He found that actually back to two versus two. It was very, very doable, but the big nades coming through. When Flasher and Synopsy shreds of health left, which should immediately dissipate as Flasher doubles down, and probably more to find. as all left to one. GX6, though, does find a double. Nicely done. AK picked up here in the one on three. Molly dropped in. Won't find much here. Time ticking away. GXX, he'll pick up one. Down to that one on two. Ecstatic, making things way too costly. Minute and ten to go. Bomb maneuvering its way towards CT. Wolfie, all he needs to do is pick up one shot with the USP. GXX to face into him. Wolfie's got it covered. But Brilliant. three kills here, though, Neo. Not a fan whatsoever. Ecstatic, losing no. big time. Yeah, exactly. It was made way too expensive for my liking. It never should have got that far, really, let's be honest. And uh, I used to say credit where credit's due over towards Blink. But I think now this real battle, we spoke about a couple of different narratives throughout this. You know, the, the Orpers is a big one, especially, you know, the likes of GXX versus Wolfie. That kickstarted Vertigo. Then it was sort of the battle of the Ecos coming through in towards the likes of Ancient, where both sides are converting Ecos that they seriously shouldn't have. And now coming to map number three, for me, it just seems like the battle of fatigue. Blink just looked tired. Flashes are in. Pump Flatro taking serious damage, but shown resistance towards Banana. Grenade drops in deep. The Molly surely should finish the job. It doesn't. Somehow kept alive. Somehow evades the flames. A 5 on 4 situation. And I don't know how Juan Flatro survives. God is on his side. I mean, 6 points of HP with utility running down from all angles. Somehow staying alive. Blinker testing a rotation. Oh, nicely done. Rigon will find one bird from Sky to trade. Still that four on three, though. Still the fabled man advantage. The Molly. One flat row. Got to be careful. Wow. Wolfie, wow. Lightning fast reactions to pick up one. Oh, here we are. Synopsy out on short. Find another. Nicely done. Wolfie to trade. His orb finds a second now, Neo. Competitive two on two. Yeah, labored spray. He gets saved there by Wolfie. Stepping up with the AWP in hand. But of course, what's making me concerned is it looking like a rotation going away. Both of Sky needs to double back. He hits a sound cue. It's good enough. But Senery finds Wolfie. He's all down to one man. The IGL needs to step up huge. Spotting Senery, dinking him down. Just about staying alive. And the bomb's still yet to find a secure plant. But then it comes. GXX cleans up. And Blink finally, in five rounds, get off the board. There you have it. The T side, as you mentioned, finally able to disrupt the momentum. Able to put themselves on the board. 
And the Blink fans are definitely going to be happy about that one. But the money, still abysmal for that T-side, Neo. You know, it's more yeah. than just a one-part story. Yes, ecstatic, the money is low. But, I mean, look, right, you've got a Mac 10 the, the utility is a little bit lackluster on a couple of these players. Ecstatic, 1M4, 1AWP, a plethora of pistols, and one hell of a dream here to find themselves a fifth. Both teams in dire need of a round win. And if Ecstatic walk away with this, this, for me, should essentially make the statement needed to close out number three. Blink is their real opportunity to try and chip away at what, at one point, seemed like a stark deficit. Question is, can they? 1A do it be 1M4A1S. Can they do it? Smoke still being dropped. Minute and 15 to go. Molly in on short. Synopsy out towards the bracket position. Looking towards long. Nothing too in his face right now. Quite evasive of the CT side. He will be met with death at some point or another if he chooses to swing long. The smoke in the way. Fasher. Creeping up close to it. Who's going to spot who first? And Fasher gets the jump. Doesn't pick up the gun though. So it means he's stuck with Ooh. a deagle. And he's stuck with no points of health to his name. What a reaction there from Juan Flatro. So fortunate to find that kill as well. Just one single bullet. A glancing brisk there. It just deletes Fasher's head. And of course, just like that. Brings it back to the four versus four. But of course, the firepower will make all the difference. And the information being relayed. Flash coming in towards Paul. Both of trying to utilize this. But he gets caught off guard. And just like that, that B-side's compromised. Blink, numbers game in their favor. Wolfie tries to go for the spam to deny the plant. Jiggling back and forth between the angle spots. Outrigan goes for the no-scope. Doesn't quite connect. The four on three. The retake is going to be pretty promising. Yes, no kit. You've got a couple of these players with the rifles. Upgrading chance of success. But Flatro once more. Taking heads. Dafu to trade. But it is a three on two. And the responsibility goes from winning the round to saving the guns. And they won't be able to do either. Blink to take a second. Well, brilliantly done. It was a risky buy. I think it's safe to say we were both maybe ever so slightly question marking that one. And well, look how it plays out. I always think those sort of hero weapons at times are a risk that's maybe not worth the reward. And well, that's exactly what we see. Get shut down immediately. The retake had no fruition and no cemented foothold. And just like that, second round collected for Blink. They're starting themselves to build up somewhat of a long term economy. They're looking in quite the good stead. And Ecstatic, it's uh, just going to be the USPs for them. Absolutely. Here we are. Round seven. And I think this should be quite quick to put Blink up to a third. Take that lead all the way down to one. Peek in. Oh, missed shot. GXX getting swung and a second missed shot. Hold on a second. That isn't good. Finally, third tries the charm. But of course, why not? One flat throw. He's going to find two. GXX and Rigan to find the last. And it will be a third on the board here for Blink. Rigan holding W for a an eco frag to add to a Sally. He desperately wanted it. Four to three. Things looking very good. But once again, mention our lovely partners over Pinnacle. 100 with the deposit bonus up to 100 euros. We sign up using the code FALL21. Just visit head.gg forward slash welcome to find out all the information and for all your betting needs. Televisions do apply 18 plus and all that good stuff. So here we are. Round eight. Flashes are out. Synopsy finds one. M4s. My god, is that messy. Real messy, in fact. Oh my god, Synopsy finally with the USP. Burn from Sky. Takes 25 bullets, but he finds two kills. Down to a three on three. GXX on the flip side of this smoke, but it's Scenari to pick up the kill. Absolute hecticness towards Banana. But it has ended in that three on two. Numbers game in favor of Blake. It's completely turned hands, this momentum here as well. Two versus three. Looking to swing forward as well. Wolfie forced off the angle. It's remaining alive just for the time being. Very, very slow. Methodical. As Manx left an isolator here of the was Cubby. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Team kill. One flat throw. Collateral. Cheeky stuff. But that, of course, makes it a little easier for Wolfie to win out this round. And a one on two. No kit. But he has got himself the opportunity if he chooses to take it. By the looks of things, he won't. I think the 10 second defuse enough to, you know, sort of make him move away. And in turn, will forfeit Blink's denial. It's a 4-4 scoreline here, Neo. It is yeah. all up in the air heading into round nine. And ecstatic, if I'm honest with you, 
Going to be looking like a little bit of a half buy from him here. No, no buy heading yeah. into round nine. So Blink actually an opportunity to uh, to take the lead here on this map. Yeah, spot on. I think as well. You know, you look over towards Dice of Blink. They're doing this on T side, which I think at times Inferno, it can be very tough to find consistent momentum in your favor on T side because, you know, the CT gamble stacks more often than not will seem to work out. Right. And this is why we've now seen those pinnacle odds change hands. They were very, very fruitful over to towards the ecstatic side, and it's actually Blink who are in a position of strength. I wouldn't say it's, you know, stable, but uh, it's better than nothing. They've got this game tied for a piece. As you mentioned, right, you know, we expected, actually, a bit of a half fight to come through, but it's not the case. We're seeing a full extension come through, full expenditure coming out, and two m 4 a to join that saved one of Wolfie. And uh, this is risky for me, Retro. I don't know if you agree. I think it's, um, you know, you lose this, you back to a double eco, back to essentially giving up, yeah. what, a three, four round lead over towards Blink, which in your first half of the final map number three is uh, it's a worrisome sight. And not to forget as well, you know, this losing this game loses your shot $40,000 in a spot at Land Suite Land. You know, this isn't yes. just about a best of three to win to get to the grand finals. It's everything that comes with the winner of the grand finals. You know, you're, you're guaranteeing yourself uh, $40,000 and then an mm. invite to a $250,000 LAN event back in, or rather I say back in, sort of in, uh, in or April of next year. Yes, yeah. So, you know, this is by no means a joke. And Blink and Ecstatic, two teams maybe that, you know, had this conversation cropped up a couple of months ago. We definitely wouldn't be saying that these guys on the brink of a grand finals place, but both very, very deserved of it. Round nine, map three, first to 16. Oh, this is it. Tie four apiece, but they've gone for the full buy here. Fasher and Bird from Sky joining the likes of Wolfie, who saved that M4-1S across. It's an obviously takes initial points of damage. A big nade coming through, really chunking it down. Destroying 60 points of HP immediately. All right. How do they do with it, though? Ecstatic, we know that they're a team that can get back into the game. Have proved themselves that. Synopsy moving towards Banana, though. He's looking for maybe a bit of an entry path thing. Dropping the Lurk Smoke forward. Flash, however, in from this CT side means that they've got top Banana control. They know something fishy about this B play. And instead... Keeping those A players on high, high alert. Synopsy, still at bottom B though, trying to cut off this circulation. So the way, Wolfie's boosted up as well. I like this position. The only problem for me is a little bit one and done. If you uh, pick up one kill, in the most likely case of the trade will come through. And also one pop flash over to a short and he is finished. Oh, that might be the one. No, turns away. Four players bombing out the middle, but it's not towards Short here. They're going right towards Long. Orpa caught off guard. They won't get the trade. And that's best case scenario here for the Rifler. He's tucked in towards the middle of sight. A second kill may be. Yes, he finds. One flat throw low HP as he continues to spam. The flashes are wild. The bodies are there. Burn from Sky and Fasha with a killer pop. And it's Fasha to find the last. Ecstatic. Gamble correctly. 5 for the score. What a read. Well. I questioned. I did question the uh, the full expenditure into it, but I raised my hands. Credit where credit's due. Brilliantly done. They just overwhelm, and that's the way to do it as well. For Ecstatic, they knew once they got a shred of information, all they had to do was pounce. Right? It's sort of like you know when you talk about a lion waiting for a gazelle in the wild. That's exactly what they do. They get a shred of information, and then they just overwhelm the T side to give them no room to work with, and leave them in a tough spot. They shot from GXX in towards mid. Already giving up banana control completely towards Ecstatic. And look how aggressive Burfin Sky's gone. Oh, just shoot. Oh. Burfin from Sky, peppering through the smoke. He won't find a thing. Instead, taking their sweet, sweet time. Realising their own game, maybe. Spam continuing to show what's up. I'm just looking for an opportunity into this round here, Blink. Minute damage taken to the nades. Nothing more than it, though. Ecstatic just trying to control the beast. All so far, very slow tempo. I like this, actually, from Blink. It's more methodical. They're looking for information. And the biggest thing is they're baiting out early utility from the Ecstatic, which, you know, we were saying this earlier, that they're normally a side who are very, very good at holding the utility to late rounds to give them that sort of advantage when it comes to executes or retakes. But look at them now, you know, they've only got a few flashes. Ecstatic have expended everything they have left. And you'd have to say that Blink in a real strong driving position. Here we are. Flashing. Nicely done, Wolfie. 
He'll find the opener, causing more havoc and disrepute towards the B site as the nades are set up. Smokes are in. Fasher flashes high. Yes, he'll catch a couple of players. Blind, but Bird from Sky got to do the heavy lifting as he dances back and forth between the angles on backside. Finally, the trade. The AWP in. GXX for a double. But it is him against three. Finds the first. Still two more to go. Oh, no. <laughs> Surely not. Oh, Manx is trying to play at range as well. This is so risky. Is it going to work? He just about manages to slip on by. He's trying to play himself in close, but it's all about timing. Oh, Jiggles in. He knows where he is. Nice shot from GXX. And a 1v3 to give Blink the F5 ecstatic. My honest opinion, throwing that round completely away. But it's Blink, the team, to take a timeout to try and learn something from it, Neo. We're at 5 a pop here on map 3. And the outings continue to prove maybe, just maybe, there is light at the end of the tunnel for Blink. Exactly. I mean, that's giving them a real lifeline here. The Toast game once again up 5-5. Five to five. They've got room to work with. It's just whether they can pull this one off. And a quick timeout called by Blink. I think it's probably a good position to use it. They've just picked themselves up around off the back of a wondrous clutch from GXX. Brilliantly isolating those fights in the one versus two. And now it's about what they can further do for this. Can they use that bit of mechanical prowess and individual brilliance from one member as a catalyst for the team's success they need to find consistency and on t side winning out this half on inferno that should theoretically give them enough to close out this series in their favor and of course move into that grand final against extra soul of course that's merely in just an hour or so for those maybe that are joining early to see what's going on Make sure to stick with us here. The winner of this game playing Extra Soul, as you mentioned. Fascia kicking things off with a bit of a bang. But from Sky's Nade, however, will find the first one. Outro, Rigon and Scenario with a kill each. Fascia's Molly available for response. The verdict still undecided within this round, though. Bomb set down. 2v3 retake. What's the option? Manx going to find a kill now to a two on two. Through the smoke as well, Manx. Delivering one versus two. He's seen to convert to once before. Can they do this time around? Swinging in. Center, he comes alive. Finds Wolfie. And now a reposition. Trying to isolate this last one versus one. Both players have taken damage. And it's all about just who spots who first. Bomb tapped. Not stuck. Manx to pull away. Peeking in. Scenery. Beautiful. Ice in his veins. Blink up to six. They have delivered the goods again. Ahead of Ecstatic. Ahead of the curve. And they're heading in sort of these last few rounds of the half, Neo. Every little round helps. It does. And, well, for them now being 6-5, I think that about seals their fate. If Blink can pick up the next couple, they are looking strong heading into this second half. Yeah, and actually, in fact, we're seeing now Ecstatic over a bit of a Hail Mary. They're going for the full expenditure into this, which, again, I mean, you know, fair play. They've done it once before, but this time it's only MP9. It's like one singular FAMAS. It may be asking a little bit too much. Mac 10 at close range. Delivering a one, make that two. Synopsy doubles out brilliantly, clears open the B sides, and just like that, ecstatic are left with two remaining players. Dafu, Wolfie, a dream needed to keep this one alive. And actually, what I like from Blink is they're going hunting. Yeah, they're not willing to hold just on this. They know taking the wind out of the cells here from ecstatic would mean everything to the later game. They're hunting, absolutely. Juan Flatro looking for a kill out towards middle. Both players crossing. Juan Flatro catching Wolfie on the cross to apartments. He knows what's up. Now, just about who can get to where if ecstatic. The remaining man of Dafu can dip out of harm's way. That's all they're looking to do. The key point in that one. And well, quite quickly, MP9 top grade at least to an AK. What else can he get done? Just that one singular AK staying alive. It's a silver lining in a tough situation. And the Molotov does make him more awkward. He's forced into a corner. He's being hunted. But he adds Rigon to his tally in the round. Just about staying alive off the back of the HE. But it's Blink. Two fine seven. And again, ecstatic. It's just looking dire for them. A two-round deficit. They're going to force once again back into this. They've got a loss bonus in their favor. So, I mean, I guess they can really afford to do so. But these sort of middling half buys aren't working. You saw the MP9 immediately shut down with a beautiful double for some, from Synopsy. Hence, I was seeing not too much of an overzealous investment. They're trying to stick on that 2K mark to give them an opportunity in towards the penultimate round or that final 15. Yeah, absolutely. 
is it, Neo? The big difference maker. CZ and Manx won't find it. The Eagle of Wolfie to find the first one. Flatro going for the spam. It's Rigon in deep apartments. They're actually hunting for these kills. Manx finds a dink Rigon to trade, though. So not all terrible. Four on four, the damage done. Scenario towards Banana could be the difference. In fact, sir, he can't find a thing. Fasher with a second. Oh, Fasher with a third. And ecstatic just when the hope maybe starts to dwindle. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Down to one, flat throw. One v four. Wolfie knows exactly where he is. Knows exactly what's going on. And it is merely a matter of time. Brilliant. They live to see another day. I've questioned their four spires, their half buys, and not anymore. Twice they've come out on top. And I think it goes to show that the rookie errors from Blink have started to creep through now. Because that's another round which they definitely should have converted. They're against two rifles there. And they overextend once again. Give way too much space over towards the CT side. And they expose them for it. Brilliantly done by Ecstatic to find six as he enters the penultimate round. But a full buy both ways is when Flash Show will just pick up that MAC-10. How do they fare into round 14? The penultimate of the first. A cracking previous few rounds. It is as close as you like. Heading into the last few rounds here. The last couple. Wolfie, big damage. Max Head. Actually going to pick him apart. First frag in favor of Blink. Fasher to at least trade though with the AK. Four on four. Guns given up by both parties. Ecstatic still have to respond. So far. So good. Oh, Synopsy. Very lucky to stay alive there. That can mean a freebie for Birth and Sky. Oh, hearing that noise. Synopsy knows where Birth from Sky is. Just about the timing. Just about the positioning. Will he be able to pick up the kill? So intense, Ineo. They've got to find the frag. It is. Synopsy knows where he is. He knows what he's got to do. He's just carrying out the task. But from Sky moving right past the timing. Oh, no Blink. Way. They could be in for everything. Okay, now the room's been given up. The things will Birth and Sky even be cleared here. I don't think they really have an understanding. Synopsy doesn't. He's completely sailing past him. It's a free one. Birth from Sky. All he had to do was just hold. He just sat still and it worked in his favor. Leaves it now in a real strong position. But I say that center, he gets tagged down to 30. Bomb set down, two on four. Flashbang dropped in. Sineri, low HP, missed shot from the orb. It's going to cost him his life, or is it? GXX, one on four, finds the first. Looking for more bodies, but doesn't quite know where to aim. It is a very nice pickup from Ecstatic. A seventh round to their name. As close as you like, heading into round 15. Who will be the team to take the one advantage at the half? What a round from Ecstatic. But got quite close, actually, considering the flank and everything, Neo. I think it it's a lot closer than it seemed. Round number 15 gets all the more interesting. Who takes the half? That is the big question. You look over towards Blink, it's going to be a tough situation for them economically speaking. They're a dire straight when it comes to their bank. But ecstatic. Finding momentum, finally. Since they haven't found any sort of consecutive rounds since the opening four off the back of that pistol. So it was looking like a tough spot. But it shows you as well how important that pistol is. Because this has been arguably a pretty poor half from ecstatic. But just finding the force by... Off the back of the pistol was netting them actually to tie this half up and actually be in it for a chance to win it. Yeah, absolutely. Looking for a way in. Or oh, miss shot. Dafu AK won't quite connect either. Now maybe in a bit of trouble for water as they've got to find the numbers. Dafu. Oh, the Tech 9 actually a team kill in the mix. Not exactly the prettiest of scenarios to sit within. Now I guess just about the time and just about to see if they can find the frags or not. Four on three. Blink. Everything to do. Limited resources to put in. Oh, Manx finding himself only that one for you. Out, but it doesn't matter. Ecstatic come out on top on the half. You say deservedly so, but it's actually a quite a tough argument against it. That pierced around, plus the bit of momentum they got off the back of it, was the real deciding factor for that actually being a half in their favour. Because... For the most part, it looked like, honestly, Blink were in complete control. They dominated the, the mid-rounds there, and they just failed to convert when it came down to the end. Ecstatic win the half, but it's unconvincing, I think it's safe to say. And the question now for me is, how does this pistol round play out? 
Ecstatic failed quite a lot when it came to their ancient pistol rounds. They started off well here, but can they double it down? So, the pistol means everything for Ecstatic. Getting themselves off on the right foot here would mean a lot. But of course, having said that as well, it isn't just the Ecstatic guys. That two-dimensional thinking yeah. that want this pistol, right? Loads of util being brought forward into this round. Three players with it, by the way. On the flip side of things, maybe not as daring. Only the kit and a smoke. Synopsy smoked out. And actually, the util works out quite nicely for them here. The execute perfect bomb will get set down. And, you know, you're into a 5-on-5 retake. Close quarters against the Glotch. And that might just happen. Head sword apart. Nice frag, at least, in response here from Rigon. Manxi does the damage. His Glock doing the work. But a nice trade from Rigon once more. But the Glock of Bird from Sky picking them apart. Two headshots across the board. And that will grant Ecstatic with a ninth. And for me, that starts to give them all the tools they need to close out of the series and join the likes of Extra Soul in that grand final. It's just that question of can they? 9-7, to seven, one away from getting double digits on the board. And of course, the brilliant thing is picking up a pistol on gives them the, the backing to pick up a comfortable buy coming through. Stunning stuff here. Manx as well. I in these fights quite brilliantly. Running out of ammo. Didn't all matter. He just waited enough time to make it work in his favor. 9-7 though, two round lead and what should probably be a three round lead. Yeah, absolutely. Blink. Got to work with a force bite. Got to work whatever they can. Just thinking about it, Neo. You know, how are Blink going to attempt this round? Are we going to see hyper aggression? Are we going to see Quan Flactro, his signature CT side aggression or... Is this going to be merely just the patience game paying off? Nothing so far. Silence across the board. Very slow round taken by both parties. Yeah, it is very slow as well. The question is how do we want to play this? I think, you know, they haven't gone for that gamble stack, which you usually see in a pistol round. They've just got, actually gone for a completely regular standard play coming through, but it should be on paper clean cut for ecstatic as they're slowly manoeuvring their way over towards this side. Rigon gets chunked down by the HE down to 41 but he'll swing in off the back of a flash body shot snets himself one but only one well how do they respond oh P250 synopsy and the 57 no. of Sineri into the jaws of the pistols they run and they aren't exactly thriving they are just about surviving Wolfie to get some at least meaningfulness into this round but it's a one on three and Juan Flatro to gun him down blink are on the board. What a round and what a way to win it. The fourth by to deny Ecstatic of any more. Yeah, Ecstatic have completely thrown away a, com a free round. Or was a completely free round for them. All it needed was confidence. And that's what they struggled. They came into so undecisive. Making them over towards B. The nade comes through. They should have swung off the back of it. No trade comes in. No one playing anti-flash. All three players are towards top card. Can completely flash. Struggled to find the trade. I mean, you know, that's a real rookie error. It's poorly played, to be honest. Well, can they correct their mistakes heading into round?